Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is Redstone Gamer, Son of a Podcast, episode 34. Today's date, March 10th, 2012, and representing Nagoya is me, Martin, or DJ Mizuhara. And we got Steven representing Tokyo. Well, representing, uh, Yo, I just Kama. found out, you know, I live on Base Stars uh, Dori, which is, uh, the company was just bought out and renamed Mobage. Oh, really? Did you, did you hear that? You know, they were in it was actually talk because I live about – I could throw a rock and probably hit the baseball stadium. And I was worried for a, a brief second that my road was going to be named Mobage. <laughs> <laughs> I would not be representing my street. No. No. So, uh, but it's still based stars Doty, so the sun still shines. Good. And representing Osaka, we've got Kyle. Howdy. Hey, Kyle. You good? Yeah, I'm good. Anybody got any stupid Japan stories or old Japan stories? Uh, Anything? No, nothing Nothing special. Nothing special? Stupid has become normal. So yeah, that's exactly. That, that's what happens. Stupid is stupid does 24-7. <laughs> okay, so we had some, uh, I don't know if anyone noticed, like last week we had some like technical difficulties with um, with Steven and like his PC going crazy. Well, apparently his motherboard died. So uh, he No, went... actually I'm really a scraphead. Yeah, oh, okay, a you're a scrap head, yeah, robot. I um, got, got nano, nanobot implants. <laughs> You've been playing too much binary domain. <laughs> yeah. Holy yeah, crap. Yeah, no, I did buy, I went out on, in the, I, I raged uh, Azeroth style and went out and bought a whole new gaming rig or PC or podcasting rig, I should say. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> How much did you spend? I dropped uh, 13 Fukuzawas, so that's <laughs> about... Nice. San Ju so one hundred thirty thousand yen. That's about fifteen hundred U.S. dollars. That's a. It's quite a machine you got, though. Yeah, I got, got a big fat graphics card, Nvidia five seventy. Not the best, but so I'm, what, what, I've you become, got an i seven in that thing. Yeah, it's an i seven actually. Oh. Yeah, i seven. How many gigs of RAM? Eight gigs. Good. Scale yeah, up to sixteen. Sounds about like what you need. Well, yeah. in this day and age, anyway, do you play games on your PC? I well, now I should be right. Right. Yeah, sounds like it. Unless you spent thirty thousand yen. Yeah. When I woke yen. up in the morning, I was I had no idea I was going to be doing that. <laughs> those are the but best it, days, man. There's just those moments in in heated. You get. I was just. It was a premeditated murder on my unpremeditated murder on my wallet. I it, the wallet didn't know what was going to happen, but so you tabbed sp- down the PC depot. The guy said my computer's motherboard is fried. And yeah, then my my wallet was fried, and then I cabbed back, and I had a I had a new rig. <laughs> <laughs> did you do that That's alone? How you or do did, it, man. Did you do that alone, or were you with a your woman? I was woman? with my girlfriend. So she was. I even then. planned it out. I'm like, now when the when the, when the guy tries to sell me a rig, you have to walk off and look uninterested. You can't get on his side, and she did that. And then I got interested, and I had no one there to pull me back to reality, <laughs> and then the buying, and she's like, what? <laughs> excellent so there you go watch out watch out yeah oh and then my my i, I can speak now by the way so I'm yeah, still, yeah. I'm oh, very you helpful didn't, you didn't yeah, bite your Steve tongue evolve 2.0 i am a scraphead <laughs> so i'm ready did you nanobot your tongue yeah the tip the tip of your tongue <laughs> expensive too damn cool okay, okay. So yeah, welcome to episode thirty-four. Today we have uh, we've got a few games to talk about. Steven's going to talk a little bit about uh, binary domain multiplayer. Yes, um, invasion and then um, versus. Okay, uh, I haven't uh, played any multiplayer because I took it back to the store and sold it, <laughs> uh, as I did with Azora's Wrath because uh, the ass fell out of the uh, the pricing because it's now. <laughs> 3,500 yen new. So I went to the store and I sold it like 10 minutes before they decided to drop it. Mm-hmm. Good timing. Um, because so I, is I, there like, like some stock ticker taper and it like starts to drop? Yeah, and seriously. Like you've got an, an app, app or something that have it perfected? Well, no. I, I go in every Thursday around what, 5 o'clock time-ish. They start like, I don't know, this a guy walks around with his little computer. He reads the barcode on it and he looks how many is in stock and then the computer tells him what price he should... Uh, Start um, dropping it. It's got a little computer. You need that computer. Yeah, well, it's a, it's a store computer for the store. It's just a, uh, it's a store inventory computer. 
So yeah, he just walks around the store and, he, and he, you can see him and he's changing prices on the fly, walking around. So and yeah, I, I, I go in there and the I see him walking around and uh, the, yeah. So as soon as I see him walking around, I've got the game with me anyway because it's a Thursday and I was thinking I need to get rid of it anyway because I'm going to lose my my money's worth. Mm-hmm. Um, like I, I I said before, there's no uh, in Japan there's no um, rental service. So basically, you buy it for the week and then take it back to the store and then sell it and you get like eighty five percent of your money back. So it was a week after. I bought it. I hadn't finished it because uh, yeah, life got in the way. But yeah, I took it back to the store and then sold it for yeah, about I got about eighty five percent back on w- what I paid for it. But like I think the next day I went in, yeah, it was it was down to uh, brand new three thousand five hundred. So well, yeah, especially on those games that really have mixed mixed reviews. I know that both of you guys seem to like it quite a bit, but uh, the reviews on it, the you know people's reviews haven't been that hot. And when it's kind of mixed like that, the game's price tend to drop pretty quickly. And when that happens. Happens, they'll get a lot of used copies back really quick. I could see the same thing happening with the uh, the One Piece Muso game that just came out and sold like hotcakes. Oh yeah, oh my god! But then was reviewed by by people, actual players, to be pretty mediocre. So. Well, it's a Muso game. What you expect length, though for Ezra's Wrath? Sure, sure. I mean that's you another got, big thing like, too. Yeah, that's what is that six, seven, eight hours something? Yeah, something like that. Not even that. Yeah, if you've got the time, which probably none of the three of us do, but if you've got the time, you could sit down and beat that in a sitting. Right? Yes. yes, I'm ashamed take, I haven't. Take me actually. about three months. But, uh, no. <laughs> exactly. So yeah, we as I was saying, we got binary domain, Azura's Wrath. Uh, Kyle's going to talk about uh, Trials in the Sky. Yeah, I'll give a little bit of input uh, now that I'm almost finished with the game, the first game. Okay, and then we got Tales of Innocence R on the Vita. It's a uh, <laughs> Bandai Namco, <laughs> yes, Scamco. Yes. Yeah, it's a remake of a DS game that came out quite a few years ago. Okay, and uh, yeah, pleasantly surprised with it. And we have Sumioni on the Vita, which Ooh. is uh, a platformer, and uh, I might as well say it now. It's uh, it's going to be released on the PSN, right, by Exceed Games. Yeah, bucks. God bless Exceed Games. Man. Yeah, this is great for twenty bucks. So if you They're the bimbo play to the bimbo's heart, the poor seriously, man's heart. Seriously, yeah. If uh, if you've got no money and you want a platformer, uh, twenty bucks is is kind of a steal for this game. So. And it's coming out at the end of this month too. You don't have to wait at all. They yes. announced, and hey, three weeks later, you'll have a 1999 game up on the PSN. Go, go get it. So let's uh, jump into it. Let's get straight into it. Steven, binary domain multiplayer, go. Oh no, this is not good game. What? It's pretty bad, man. The, the multiplayer? multiplayer? Yeah. Well, that was stereo, good. Kyle. That was kind of cool. <laughs> In synchro. Yes, yes. Um, all those good things I said in the other podcast, uh-huh. they do not translate over. And um, I will, so I've played, there's two parts uh, to the online. Um, there's there's um, Invasion, which is a lot like Horde mode for Gears of War. And then there is just straight up multiplayer like Deathmatch and bring, you know, just all different types of standard stuff you see in all games. And I played... Um, I played invasion mode first, and uh, you, I couldn't even get into a match first, first and foremost. I just went on and said, there's no matches, there's nobody <laughs> playing online. There's and I'm nobody. like, there's nobody online I'm playing like, There's it. nobody. So I looked and it says, well, you can open up, you can start a room. So I started a room, and I'm just sort of sitting in there, and I'm in the middle <laughs> of Shibuya, and this is like the only time I've been in Shibuya, and there's nobody there. And I'm like, wow, this is really bad. And then about three or four schmucks come in, and... I have to realize I have enough for a game, so I go into the menu and say start match, and it starts, and uh, it, a little icon in the upper left, you know, and there's a number icon, and it says you have five hostiles, and it's just completely quiet, and then the scrap heads start popping out. You know, the Martin, the 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 scrubby scrap heads, the guys that first start out, come out in the game, and they're shooting at you, the real normal, what it yeah, the iRobot style, iRobot guys. Yeah, yeah, that those are the guys who come at you for the first stage, and it's just five of them. And uh, the the sound is good, and you know it's all the type of stuff that you carried over well from the the single player campaign. But immediately, it sounds like the voice when everyone's talking on the voice chat. It sounds like everybody's playing in their bathtub, and it's just like this echo you have, and uh, it was really getting annoying. So you and you. It's very clumsy in the way that you exit out where you press a select and you can go and you can mute the, the characters, but it, it seemed like all the control the, the controls were very sticky. 
you couldn't just back back out back out back out and quick mute and then go back into the game is is this uh through the headset that comes with the game or is this through the headset that you've uh, like the, the so, regular 360 so i headset. was just playing with my straight up headset but not even me it was the the sounds that were coming in from everybody right. else okay no i was just thinking if if it was uh, just the the regular microsoft uh, headset you get bundled with the actual machine right right Okay, so and, it's uh, not that. So no, it wasn't. And then, so we, we played through, I got basically my first go, I got through five rounds. And um, the second round, or no, second or third round, the guys with riot shields show up. And uh, these riot shields are gigantic. And they basically can hardly even see their feet from behind them. And uh, I don't, do you remember, did you get up to the riot shield guys? Yes, I got to, I got to those, them? yes. What was your impression of them? Uh, pain in the ass, but if you uh, you've got that um, the w- with the weapon you've got, you can hold it and charge it, right? Right. So I, w- with that weapon, I just I was just uh, let them basically line up in front of me and charge that weapon and blast them to right. bits. So it works when there's not a uh, guys coming at you one after another. Right. But there was it's, it's it, there got to be a point where there were just everybody was with a riot shield and you throw your grenade and you would run out. And uh, it did not take much to die. And you're kind of in this open area with limited coverage and everybody was just dropping dead. And you have, if you can purchase like these little items and including a, a first aid kit. And if you, you, you have that, then that's fine. But if you die, you're done. And if the, the guys don't survive the round, you're finished. In the multiplayer, and, is there like a, a Gatlin gun anywhere around or is that not? Because in the single no, player, I didn't. See, there, you can actually pick different classes, like a sniper, like a striker, a heavy gunner, and that type of thing. Right. But yeah, you didn't. You nothing like that type of weapon. However, when you got to round five, after it was really boring playing these riot shields after one after another, they finally had one of those bigger robots with the Gatling gun, and he just ate through everybody. Right. I, I played it three times in a row, and I, everyone was dying by the, the fifth one, and it was just really tiring going back and going through that. Because if you played Horde mode for Gears of War, you had a good, from the outset, you had a good variety of different enemies you were fighting. Right, right. No, because I noticed that in the single player, that the uh, the guys with the riot shield, there was always a guy, or there seemed to be always a guy with the, uh, with the Gatling gun, you know, a stationary Gatling gun, and if you right. took him out and you ran to his his position and then you jumped onto the gatling gun you can take everyone out pretty quickly mm. but that there's, there's nothing like that in this in the multiplayer no like something that you can use like a power weapon yeah. you mean right no no okay that, not that i see maybe there is something hidden on the map but and i played with a couple guys who are higher levels and they didn't even seem to be doing anything amazing are you playing is this lo- uh local or is this uh world the, the um, it didn't really say. It just said start a match. Okay, but I mean the people that you were online with, the, were they? Yeah, there were people who were speaking English. Oh, and they were. I think one one kid was like I said, he was in the bathtub, but it was it sounded Middle Eastern. <laughs> so you couldn't find a game at all, even though it was probably searching internationally. This is for invasion. This okay, this okay. Invasion. So you had the like mode picked mode. first, and then when I went in to start some matches, it. You can select from like just versus mode, you know, and uh, when I did that, it, it would give you a mark saying in this particular uh, room, like for deathmatch there here, there are people here. OK. And when I jumped into that, that was OK. But the actual just the flow of the match was was really bad because you were dying very quickly, but it didn't have like uh, those good feelings you'd have with if you played uh, like a modern warfare game where if you die quickly, you're back in the match right away. And it felt really good flow wise. It was just everyone was camping. The aim was terrible. This it, the hit detection didn't seem good. Uh, so does it feel more mis executed or does it feel like it was more tacked on? They created a single player game and then they tried to add this on, or does it just feel like right. from it's, the get go they like they didn't do any heavy testing like you would expect nowadays, where they okay. would do like a beta test and even or like maybe they everybody within Sega they would do a test, yeah, and all the employees test it, and then then if you're lucky they do a beta test where the you know ten thousand lucky people get to play it or something like that. Like it gets, I get the feeling like they didn't even do like a solid Sega beta test. Okay. Internally, just doesn't feel like there's so many things wrong from the get go that you're 
like these guys did not get any genuine advice. So I don't want to go back to it unless I can get a group of people to play together that I know. And I'm, I don't think that's going to be possible. That's just kind of interesting because this game was a March worldwide March release, right? Mm. Yeah. So it almost sounds like this multiplayer, I mean, it might have been rushed, but who rushes their games to get them out in March? (laughs) So good. (laughs) <laughs> to me, this right? game, it would have been better without having it. I wish they would just tacked more loving development time you know, onto the single-player campaign, well, but I think they felt obliged to do it. Yeah, right, I think right. that most people, uh, most companies now are kind of obliged to do it, so uh, it keeps the uh, people from returning it to the store because they have like an incentive to keep playing it. That they've added multiplayer, whereas... like. In the past, uh, if it was a single-player game, they would finish it and take it back to the store and then resell it, right? And then, obviously, the store sells it, but like the company gets nothing out of it. Right, so right. There's a lot of, yeah, so the used copies and that. So a lot of companies now, it looks like they're just tacking on some multiplayer or some kind of online aspect, like uh, maybe a score chase or something like that to just keep the player occupied uh, so right. they don't go to the store and then sell it and then... Uh, the store sells it as second hand and, and obviously makes all of the money, whereas the developer publisher gets nothing. So a lot of companies, it looks like they're just putting something in just to try and keep the player there and uh, have, yeah. have the player keep holding it. I doubt you're going to get like downloadable con- content for maps down the pipeline. I would be shocked. Interesting. To see that type of stuff. So yeah, I mean, yeah, if, if you like pineapple on your pizza, I do. Know, maybe this is. <laughs> I do like pineapple the on shooter pizza. for you. There's some pineapple on it, <laughs> but I like the single. The, I thought the single play was awesome. I That's thought it was, what I can't. I was so terrified to play it actually because I was I was fearing this. I feared the worst because you would have heard people in the West talking about it. If it was a good shooter. I felt right. <sighs> I, I don't I mean to be, to be honest. I don't think it it was panned critically. What, like Metacritic. Well, I mean, I don't know. I know Garnet Lee was talking about it. He really liked it. So I was hoping some big journalists would be able to. Give it some ground, a little bit of groundswell. Well, it looks like uh, it's it's averaging a seventy four on Metacritic, which is actually pretty decent. The question is now: so if it's a it's a non Western developed shooter and it doesn't have good multiplayer, is that's not enough for the for the inter, the global formula for shooters? Yeah, that's a good question. It, it probably isn't, to be honest, but which is a damn shame. Yeah, it is. Right. A damn so shame. it's a it full is. game, and it's so good. It really is. Well, it's got like a Metacritic of seventy four. The, the user is is eight point eight. Right. The user seems they, to like it more than. They need to hire somebody from Epic Games. <laughs> for the Japanese game, there's got too much dude bro for the front cover, though, right? <laughs> yeah, the front cover. Yeah, I think that actually helps it. Though. You think so? Because this look, the front cover for Binary Domain in the West is terrible. The yeah. dude with uh, another dude on his shoulders, you know, shooting. It's like an old na- <laughs> 1990 Mega, like mega Drive. Uh, yeah. The yeah. uh, Genesis. It's, uh, yeah, it's a, like a Genesis art cover. It's terrible. I don't know. Sega going back to their terrible box arts again. Maybe that's probably yeah. a reason why no one bought it as well. But no, it's it's a shame that the, uh, the, the online multiplayer is, uh, as it sounds, awful. You die too quick, really. It's just nah. but in the single player, you can revive yourself and you can call for your friends to uh, right. to, to help well, you out. I was out, shouting right? in the mic and I was desperately trying to do that as well through my selections. No one was responding, and I was shouting. You guys all sound like you're in the bathtub. No one was <laughs> responding to me, and I'm like, this is perfectly broken. May- Why may- maybe they responding? were in a bathtub. I know. Maybe they're getting electrocuted, and that's why I was getting a bad backup. <laughs> that could be it. Yeah, maybe they were having a LAN party in a backup. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. That's oh. a pineapple. <laughs> All righty. Okay, I think we should move on then. Yeah. Yes. So sorry. Yeah, yeah that's kind of disappointing, isn't it? I'm disappointed that the multiplayer I hate was to terrible. Bring information like that out. Yeah. Get well, it's good to be honest. Though. Well, I guess just wait for a price drop. Then, if you want to play a single player, wait till it's like what thirty bucks. I don't know. 20 what would you pay for it for the single player steve the price i paid okay the price you pay for the single player is is, is i would what... have been i would have the game is still the, i i don't rate it any different because, because of... i'm that kind of player i don't need like i know journalists like i remember here in like giant bombs like top 10 to talk about the whole package the whole package for me i don't need the whole package because i really have time for the whole package 
Right. Yeah. Exactly. Journalists have to rate it that way. But as a gamer, I just need to, I just need to have these pivotal moments and then it, for it to carry though. And then, you know, you're having pivotal moments every so often and then you finish a solid session you go, that was damn good. And then you do three more sessions of that was damn good. The game's over. And to me, that's a really good game. I'm happy at it. Yeah, it's all about the experience. I totally agree with you there. So, I mean, are you the type of person who just sits down and play it from start to finish, in, or you'll try and finish it in one go, or, or is that not what you uh, are? Uh, no, I haven't I haven't done that um, since, uh, what, what's that game we played, the religious one? El Shaddai. El Shaddai. Uh, El, Shaddai. Yes. El Shaddai did in one go, and that was painful. I hurt. <laughs> I mean, that was a great game, but it just literally hurt my head. But um, I finished this in two sessions, and but those were epic sessions. And epic and how 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 long are epic sessions? Like eight out like eight hours and like four hours or something like oh, that. Oh really? Wow. I don't think I've put eight hours into a game since I moved to Japan. And that was six years ago. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean in, in one, one session. Sitting, in one session. Yeah. You know well, I like to if it if it hooks me, I'll 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 let it reel me in. Right. Yeah, no, I I haven't got the time for that anymore. I mean I broke it up with them. Some food, but yeah, that was it was and some ume, umeboshi plum wine, right? Plum. Yeah, <laughs> scones and plum wine. Yeah, scones. Oh, that sounds nice. It's nice. All right. Well, let's move on then. Let's go to Azora's Wrath. Uh, Stephen, you went back and started this on hard, I believe. Yes, I did. Why was the what was the reason? Well, I think we we where we left off. You know, I think uh, Kyle said, "Was there any meaningful play that we had?" Right, right. We tried to crack that nut. <laughs> and I, think I said like there's I said it wasn't relevant and I think I went on to talk about the over the top aspects that trump everything else but then you and I tried to do talk about gameplay and nothing had a lasting impression on me so we, we kind of fell off the cliff on our conversation so I went back and played it on hard uh-huh. seeing if that would create a lasting impression like maybe I would die and then I you know have to learn some some new tricks gameplay tricks right yeah, that, that, that's the thing. I haven't died. Oh, I didn't die f- through my entire g- uh, time with the game. And I think I was just up to maybe episode 12, something like that, 11, 12. And I hadn't died once, so I was like, hmm. <laughs> you haven't died? No. So. Okay, well, I probably died about a dozen times. And I am, let's see, there's there, it's broken up by episodes. And then each, each episode has um, like S- chapters within a it. chapter, yeah. And uh, I am on um, episode one, chapter six. I, where I am right now, I currently have no arms. <laughs> <laughs> Yet I'm fighting. Yes, that's quite Carrying amusing. On the that's quite amu- and, uh, that, that whole fight sequence is really amusing. Just yes. watching them go at it. I mean, I've never seen. I thought Kratos from um, God of War was angry, but dude, this guy is. So Super angry. I've never seen somebody so angry in all my life. He's just angry with everybody and everything. And it's it's amusing. It's really amusing. It's not like annoying where uh, Kratos is kind of annoying right. with, with his anger. But yeah, but this dude well, it's is great. Even in, when you select a difficulty level, like there's a little there's a little like a uh, subtitle under it. When you select, select easy, it says for players who want to enjoy the story. And then for normal, it just says. The players who want to seek revenge on those who betrayed them. I'm like, what? <laughs> that doesn't mean that doesn't that mean anything thing? about the level of difficulty of the enemies. And then, <laughs> and then hard. What the hell was hard? Hard was just like pure of full of rage or something like that. No, here it is. It says for players who want to unleash their wrath. <laughs> oh. What does that mean? I mean. That doesn't tell me anything. That means like that's a, kind of true here. That's like so a player like, who wants to go through many controllers while playing the game. Yeah. Right, because you're throwing them while you're not throwing them. Um, I you probably died like, maybe six six times or so. And, you know, you get graded um, when you when you play the game, don't you? Yes, you do. Like, like you, how long uh, it, it has, takes. Like a rubric of like, how your synchronic timing Yes, as uh, how fast you finish the game, and then like how many combos and stuff like that. Yes, and it, even on hard, I got straight S's. Are you serious? For the first for first round, that is, and I was like, it was a little bit of okay, it's harder, but it was like sprinkled with it's harder here and there. But I was basically in God mode the whole time. 
And is, is hard the hardest difficulty in the game? That's, that's the hardest, game. unless you, there's an unlock and then you can play Wrath Mode or something. I yeah, hope, yeah. I hope players who like, want like to an play. enemy Wrath. <laughs> Maybe you can play the whole game without arms. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Just rolling eye, flaming eyeballs. Yeah, and, and head headbutting people and kicking them and that's it. Yes. But I hope there is a, something like that. Or ungod mode. It needs an ungod mode right now, but it does get a little bit more difficult later on. Like I am currently without arms, as I say, and it's like he looks like a he does look like a scrap head. He has no it's like there's like it looks like there's like a cyborg underneath him. He's yes. Like, arms are flashing. He's got electricity yeah, coming out of his uh, sockets. Yeah. So, and, uh, but he's he still has. We talked about this before. He has this like um, when your gauge is full, you can press Y and do unleash this like big attack. Yes, and it doesn't really translate what he's doing because he's like I say, he's got no arms, but he's kind of doing this, and it's just I don't know. He's somehow directing a rage attack on him, and that's still killing, hurt, doing damage. Other than that, he's just got kicking. He's just kind of kicking. Yeah, he, he, he can kick, and he, if you jump and then hold, I think it's the uh, the B button, he can he does like a, a target attack with his feet. Right, oh, the target, okay, I didn't even, oh, I could use that one. So jump <laughs> jump, and then press B and hold it, and then he'll do a target attack. You record it for me, because you can record your play, right? Yeah, as far as really? I remember. Press, you have an episode menu. There's like play and then there's record. I haven't tried record, but for some reason you can record. I guess if you just want to have the whole movie. But anyways, even once you finish the lab episode, you can watch the episodes later, which I thought was nice. Yeah, you, I mean, you constantly when you finish the episode, you're constantly unlocking like artwork and movies and yeah and, and stuff like that. So there's, there's constantly things to unlock as you're going through, which is quite nice because the, um, the cut scenes... The, the ones that are done in like anime form, manga form, yeah, they're beautiful. They are. You know the stills. And the character design is amazing. Mm. You see one character for the first time and you never forget that person. There could be like six demi demigods on screen and you just see them for a second, but there's just something there so unique, like a Street Fighter character or something like that. You just it resonates with you and that reading the development they spent tons of time trying to bring that out in each character there yeah it's kind of like um, Team Fortress you know like you can tell right. what character exactly. it is even yeah. though it's really far <laughs> away I, I, precisely and because of the, the silhouette and the way they've been designed you can t you know who it is even if you can't like see any detail because of the silhouette and the stature I wish Team Fortress would make some videos like that for it, as was Wrath that would be so awesome yeah so I mean I got quite far into this game and I I wish I hadn't have, hadn't have sold it um, looking at the price now uh, seeing it as it's so cheap I'm, I'm kind of tempted to just go buy it again second hand <laughs> and, just, and just carry on where I left off because I was yeah, just going to save game I really want to get finish it because I, I think I was on like I, I was on the episode twelve in the game and uh, I I just got to the spaceships just uh, I love the way he flies into space it's great he runs along the floor and then punches the floor and he shoots up into space <laughs> <laughs> it's just very anime it's just typical anime it's just and really it's ridiculous crazy. with the culture too because there's a port where he he gets defeated and twelve thousand years pass. And you're just like, right, 12,000 years just passed. Wow. You're just like, okay, that's fine. I'm good with that. Yeah, yeah. How can you get more over the top? Or like, they'll say like the negative energy of this guy is like at level 56,000 or something like that. Really? Like really? when these big enemies appear, just just show this. And you're like, okay, where's the frame of reference? What does that mean? <laughs> but the thing oh. is, is uh, one of the guys that you fight, he's, he's only at the start, he starts off a little bit bigger than you. And then you defeat him, and then he gets bigger again. And then you defeat him again, and he turns into this crazy powerful boss who's bigger than the planet. You're right. right. You've, you've beat him, right? Yeah, yeah, oh, definitely. He fingers you, right? <laughs> yeah, this was actually pretty big in the marketing. Yeah, this is at the, the yeah, TG, uh, TGS um, re reveal, right? Right, and that's where he loses all of his arms. Yes. Because uh, the, the finger comes down, and it's like the size of a continent, and he punches it to death and actually kills the, the, the guy. Yes. And he punches his arms off while doing it, right? Yeah, the flames like just spread all the way up the arm to his socket, and they cover his head, and he's dead. Yeah, but I, yeah, I kind of wish I didn't have to sell it. But seeing as how uh, how quickly the 
the price was dropping. I, I, I didn't have any choice, otherwise I wouldn't have been able to buy anything else. And this is just another thing that extends the, the, the pivotal moments. You know, like, there are so many in this, this game as well. And it just really brings out the value. What makes up for in, um, like, girth rather than, you know, length. <laughs> girth. Yeah, yeah but the, I mean, it's one thing, though, the sound, as I said last time, the soundtrack is beautiful. The music is gorgeous. I mean, I don't yeah, know if you, good. I don't know if you paid much attention to it. Yeah, it just it's it feels like a triple A title, something that you'd expect from Capcom. Kyle, where are you? Uh, we're sitting on this one, no? Um, if I can get it for three thousand yen, I'll pick it up and give it a shot. Uh, I played the demo, like I mentioned last week, and I think I, I played the part where you yeah you hit the guy's finger and it like sends a shockwave through his entire body or whatever. Uh, just incredibly, incredibly over the top. If I can have it for cheap. Uh, this is probably a game where if I get addicted, I, I would probably just do it in a sitting and be done with it. But um, like I said earlier, for me also, it's it's all about the experience. I'm, I'm not too worried if a game is short or if a game is long or if a game doesn't have certain features. It's all about the experience that well, the game gives me. This game will definitely has a, a very unique experience. And I think one experience that will stay with you for a while because it's, it's something is very is very different about it. Well, this one's interesting because this is one that was, correct me if I'm wrong, but pretty critically panned, I guess. It, not, not that it was, like, given horrible reviews, but not great reviews, to be sure, and user reviews on it are also quite mixed, uh, right, right in the, the you know, mid-range there. But everyone I've talked to personally, especially people who live here in Japan, uh, my, you know, people that I know who are foreigners but live here in Japan that have played it, everyone has nothing but positive things to say about it. Yeah, I mean, everyone I've spoken to who lives in Japan as well, everyone's really positive about it, mainly because I think it's the, uh, the influence of the anime, and it feels like old 90s anime, you know, when it was really over the top and just totally crazy, and it was yeah, just... Yeah, yeah, right when a lot of us probably got into it. Yeah, and that. it was just totally mind-blowing. I, I think that's probably one of the reasons why. Yeah, I mean, I certainly haven't played anything like this. I mean, the, the, one of the reasons why I like it is, A, the actual the fighting when you're uh, in an arena and you're fighting dudes... That lasts all of about five minutes, and then the rest of it is just pure entertainment of watching these crazy cutscenes with very very minimal QTEs, and it, it's broken up into like small chunks of, of playing a, a sweet little beat 'em up, and the combos feel very satisfying. And then it's as I said, it's broken up into into these crazy over the top um, QTEs, and then just uh, actual like movies. You know, and it's the, it's the way it's broken up. I thought it was really satisfying the way it was. I only have one more thing to add to that, and that is um, when you finish an episode, uh, there's like this a narrator comes in, and they almost like it's almost like a drama on TV where they're introducing the next, the episode. next episode. Yes, and it, it, they really do it well, and you're just like they kind of pick all like these highlights and they just sort of flash it. You're like, oh, I want to, I gotta see that. Yeah, I gotta see that. Yeah, I gotta see that. You're like, I'm, I'm gonna want to go to bed, but oh man, 15 more minutes, just get some dirty play in here, one more, and so, uh, uh, I like it. Be honest with me here, guys. Have you been bored at any point in time playing this? Well, no. and again, this is the thing. Like I say, playing this game, but this sounds more like an experience than a game. But have you been bored at any time? Absolutely this? not. I haven't. No. All right. No. Well, then, then maybe it's it's something to definitely check out. And more of it is like, if if they're already going this over the top beginning in the game, how are they going to outdo themselves later? And then when you, when you see in the next <laughs> episode they're going to do this and that, you're just like, oh yeah. This is <laughs> you just kind of like rub your hands together. Like, oh yeah, I'm ready. Well, there's DLC um, coming up for this, right? I think isn't there already like four waves of it? Is there? I don't know. I haven't got like, any more. Like, I can't tell you. <laughs> I got, this is uh, I think there is and if if that's true I, I do believe that maybe some more of that should have been in the game but it looks like they'll probably finish the story arc and then the and then they're just the story continues. So. I, mean, I mean, with the story is uh, basically he gets framed for killing the god, right? Yeah. And there's like eight godly warriors who are like they're meant to protect the earth right. from uh, was it is it uh, Goma? Yes. Yeah. Um, so basically, after returning from like that, remember the battle you talked about where there was like a big, uh, it was like a big mouth in a, in another planet, and you were fighting it, and it was like, it was, sorry, it was like squids and stuff. Remember, like a big rock, 
in a right. planet, and it was like squids. And so basically, after after uh, defeating that, Azora's uh, he's summoned to the uh, Emperor, right? right. A- as he goes to the Emperor, so he's been yeah, murdered, and then he's accused by everybody else of murdering the Emperor. He then then rushes home to his wife, and he's got a, a daughter as well. And as he gets home, his wife's being murdered as well. So. Whoever's behind his daughter's kidnapped, and, and then his and daughter's you're not kidnapped. Spoiling well. anything because this is all within like the first twenty minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, that's a, that's a whole story, the beginning, right? So that's not any, any it's kind a of spoiler. Of his rage, yeah. Well, sure, sure. And yeah, yeah and that, that's that's his rage and wrath. That's where he gets his wrath from. Yeah. So and that time is twelve thousand years. Let's see, you guys getting peed. Yeah. Now, neither of you have finished this, correct? No, I want to. I, I want to go back and buy it. It's because the problem with being like promiscuous, man. When you have so many consoles and you're just yes. stretched so thin, and you yes. get a little bit in here and there, it's hard to sink into one game. See, for me, the the revenge plot is a is a big point of interest for me, but it has to be done right. You know, you have to feel very satisfied once you finally get your revenge or along the steps. They have to build it up right. But but yeah, if they do that, it, it sounds like it could be a very interesting well, game. The way you kill these guardians is hugely entertaining. It's it's really fun. It's it may not be the perfect revenge um, game though. Like where you like you're so horrid with what they've done and you just have to like exact justice. Uh huh. It's really not like I I see what you're going. You might be setting yourself up for disappointment there. It's I think it's more what Martin just said. You're you're just there for the entertainment of it. Okay. Of him of him unleashing not just like these you know you've seen some horrible movies where like you know. Uh, I don't know, like name, or uh, just some some guys coming in on some village, and then they're seeing like a total massacre before their eyes, and you're right, just seeing right. people being raped, and you're like, these people all need to be killed, and you're like you're full of rage, and just seeing all of them die, you're you just are satisfied. It's nothing like that. Okay. No, it's not like that at all. But it is hugely entertaining how he does, uh, in the end, get rid of this, get rid of the the other guardians. Yeah. It's just it's just hugely entertaining. If you see it cheap, go buy it. Okay. Yeah, I'll take a look tomorrow. Yeah, go to Den Den Town and see what they got for you. I will. I will. Sweet. Okay, well, uh, let's move on then. So we've done... We've kind of just round two of both of those games we wanted to talk about again. But yeah, Binary we're done Domain. With those. Binary Domain is a no-buy <laughs> for the multiplayer <laughs> anyway. I'm sorry. No, but for single player, it's a definite buy, right? Yeah, even despite all that, it's still totally worth it. All righty, cool. All right, let's jump into... Um, Hmm, Kyle, you got some uh, Trials of the S- in the Sky, right? Sure, yeah, I'll talk just a little bit about it. Uh, append a bit onto what I said last week, uh, right. as it was a bit of an afterthought. Uh, this is a PSP game. Right. It's called, yeah, Legend of Heroes is this the series that's been around forever, and this is Trails in the Sky. It's made by Falcom, who have been around forever. Yes. Uh, they're behind the Ease games. Ease games, yes. So, yeah, kind of a legendary series by now. But yeah, this is Trails in the Sky. It was released from Exceed, who are the ones bringing Sumioni over. Uh, it was released uh, near the end of last year for the PSP. And that's kind of the danger in the whole thing now, is this is the first game in a three-game series, and then there are actually games beyond that now, which kind of extend the series even further. But as far as the direct story goes, there are three games here. And this is coming out in English for the first time, the very first game at the end of last year for the PSP. I think all three of us probably know how well PSP games sell in the States. Right? <laughs> they don't. They get copied. And yeah, yeah, yeah. And this game has so much text in it. It is ridiculous. And the second game apparently has way more than even the first game here. So... There is a lot of talk that the second game might not even make it over, which is kind of sad, to be honest, for, for all the people out there who are waiting for it. Is that kind of just makes you not want to even get and start the series at all if you know that the second game is not even going to come? For people who only speak and read English? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah Absolutely. It's, just like, it's like, what's the, why, why do I want to invest in this when I know that the, the whole story is not going to be told or I'm not going to get to experience well, the whole thing? Right. Hey, can you, uh, this is probably the first time we mentioned this game on our podcast. Can it's you not, just run through? It's not. We did it last week when you when you had the <laughs> technical difficulties. We spoke about this. Oh, that's right. I, I bailed out for a little bit. Sorry. <laughs> no, that's all right. I didn't give a great run through of it last week uh, either. So, yeah, let me just talk a little bit about it. 
This game harkens back to the wonderful, wonderful PlayStation 1 era of RPGs. I get some, some Xenogears vibes from the way the game operates a little bit, which is wonderful. I don't know about you guys, but that's uh, a game that I hold quite dear. Uh, the, the game is kind of 2D sprites on a 3D background with a rotatable camera. Uh, if you've played PlayStation 1 RPGs before with 2D characters and 3D backgrounds... Uh, a la Xenogears and, you know, games like that. You'll know exactly how this game looks. It looks very Japanese. They don't really make games like this anymore. They obviously don't make games like this anymore for home consoles. Uh, so this is very much a PSP game. Uh, it was originally actually released on the PC, but that was quite a while ago, uh, before it was ported over to the PSP. However, now with this series, Falcom does them all only on PSP. They've moved their development to PSP. Uh, and they're remaking one of them for Vita now. So yeah, it's moved to the handheld systems. Uh, as we've talked about a little bit in the past, uh, handheld systems are really the place to get these kind of, I mean, I don't want to say old school, but this kind of classic kind of RPG feel or classic Japanese game feel. A lot of the companies have moved these, this development to handhelds now. Uh, and this kind of gives off that vibe. So I do want to say that if you are a fan of RPGs of the yesteryear, if you're a fan of PS1 RPGs, if you like good stories, if you like good battle systems, and you don't need Final Fantasy XIII-style graphics, uh, if you can appreciate games for what they once were back in the day, I think you'd really, really dig this. The story is incredible. Uh, this is a story that, that kind of belongs in a novel, really. It's, it's great. And like I said, yeah, I'm almost finished with the first game now, and... Yeah, like Martin was saying, this is definitely not going to tie everything up here. Obviously, there are three games, but this is definitely not going to tie enough up here to where you'll feel incredibly satisfied. Um, yeah, it's more like a cliffhanger, really, in that you just want to know what's going to happen next. That's something that's kind of really upsetting to hear, that uh, you could potentially spend your money on this game, get your hours out of it. Yeah, okay, that's great, but never get to actually find out the final conclusion of the game it's kind of upsetting to know that that's potentially on the cards yeah, yeah. well let's look at the positive side of things real quick uh falcom uh not falcom sorry uh like i said originally these were pc games all three of them in this in this series uh it's known as sora no kiseki in japan they translated as trails in the sky in english uh exceed recently uh applied or was obs- was accepted uh onto steam so Exceed will be publishing games onto Steam. And their first game will be Ease Oath in Felgana, which is an amazing Ease game. So I recommend checking that out. So people are thinking that if, if Exceed can kind of make a name for themselves on Steam, maybe if Ease gets some decent sales, that they might actually just take the second game in this series and release it in English on Steam, uh, which would be fine with me. You know, playable as long as it's playable in English, uh, I think that's great. For me, obviously, I'm going to go ahead and go on and play it in Japanese because... I can, and I'm very interested to continue. But it would be nice if the second and third games just came out for the fan base to create a fan base. It's, it's impossible to get a Western fan base going in a three-game series if you only release the first game. Yeah, tell me about it. So, Wow. So uh, is this, uh, this, this is a game that you've been playing since the PlayStation 1 di- uh, times, right? Oh, well, no, no, no. This is a game that, that I just actually got into the series maybe a month ago. Okay. Uh, I, I knew about the series. I've played a lot of Ease games. I've played other Falcom games. But for whatever reason, this, this was not really on my radar. I knew about these games kind of known as the Kiseki series in Japan. Uh, they are up to five now and working on the sixth, uh, kind of part of the Kiseki branch of the Legend of Heroes uh, AU Densetsu series. Um, but yeah, I, I just got into this recently, and it really rekindles all of those old feelings. But it does it really well. I, I don't know about you guys, but I've gone back and played some of my you know old favorite RPGs, uh, and there are just some archaic systems in there. Uh, it's kind of the inability to adapt, you know, the Japanese systems, and you, you see where these Japanese systems came from with save points. And if you die on a boss, you have to restart at the last save point. Right annoying leveling up before you can get into a dungeon grinding this, that and the other everything that i just mentioned is not an issue in this game they they do so many things to make the game 
just if you want to play through it and see the story, you don't have to basically do any leveling up at all. You really don't. But on the other hand, if you're the kind of person who likes to go through and level up and do side quests, there are tons of that stuff in here. So it, it just does so many things right that you cannot get frustrated with it. You really can't. Uh, and the story, I will give it this, uh, and I've read this is some people's complaint. It starts out a little bit slow. But honestly, that slow burn at the beginning is what gets you so engrossed in the world and engrossed in the characters that by the time you get to the midpoint or the latter point of this first game, really, I, I just want to keep playing more and find out more uh, and, and, and keep going because it really opens itself up and you really want to just know what's going on and why things are happening. How is the music in this game? Because I know that uh, Falcom games, especially the uh, Eves, yes, uh, absolutely. Great the music, music scores are beautiful. Um, yeah. Uh I I heard that other people weren't they 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 didn't think that this had the greatest soundtrack ever, but I will say that I think it has really nice music and I've heard that later games in the series have even better music. I think the battle music's great. It's kind of an interesting take on battle music. Uh at least I thought so anyway. And yeah, I think the other music is quite good. So definitely I I think it's up to Falcom standards for sure. Cool, cool. cool. Cuz no, normally uh the Falcom they they have um they have like a collector's edition, right, with the soundtracks yeah, for and stuff. Almost every game out there, yeah. And it, it, is this something that you got, or did you buy a digital version, or what? I've got both. Uh, I have a Japanese version of the game. I actually have the English version of the game as well, and I have the digital English version of the game. And wow. my wife has the digital Japanese version of the game. So, so hang on, is that like four? You've dipped four times. Quadruple as a family, we've Quad- quadruple dipped. Ouch. <laughs> Um, but that's kind of not that not that I do this for really any other game, but uh, yeah, it, it kind of worked out that we cut quadruple dipped. But I don't feel bad about it at all because this is again a, a series and a game that I really kind of want to show my support to. Not yeah. that I'm going to go quadruple dipping on every game I want to show my support to, but it, it really worked out that my wife wanted to play it on her Vita. Uh, I wanted to play it on my Vita in English, even though I'd already started it in English on a PSP. So I had to you know pull that over and, and keep playing there. Um, yeah, and I wanted the English Collector's Edition, since you can kind of still get them new for pretty cheap. And I bought the entire uh, the trilogy set in Japan, which has all three of the games in, in a single box. Is is this... Uh, there's no online, is there anything like that? No, no online here. Uh, nothing like that. A pretty traditional RPG in that sense. It's not going to really do anything that blows your mind, but it does everything right. Okay. So. Sweet. So this is something that you definitely recommend for the RPG heads. Yeah, if you were an RPG fan in the PlayStation era, if you still like RPGs, if you like good stories, check this out. Just know going into it that we don't really know about the future of this series. Um, Xseed is still pretty optimistic about it, but not not they're not saying at this point that it's definitely coming out. Uh, just that they need to need to get a finalized script before they can really do anything with it. So. Okay, well, sticking on the RPG trip, uh, let's go with uh, Tales of Innocence R on the Vita. Sure, sure. Uh, Here we go, another RPG right here in a row. Uh, This was originally a DS game, Tales of Innocence, Japan only. And Tales of Innocence R for the Vita is is also Japan only, as far as we know now. Oh, really? Yes. uh, There has not been any announced overseas release. And with Tales, it's kind of a crapshoot, to be honest, because some of them have been released overseas, some of them haven't. Especially the handheld iterations have not really seen a great, great right. overseas support. Because Tales of Grace was on, uh, is common to the PS3 or is it on the, it's on the PS3, right? Yeah, yeah. it was originally a Wii game. It was a Wii game, right? But it, the Wii version never made it overseas, but then F was released, right? Tales of Grace is F. Uh, but that's been out in Japan for a while and it's finally, finally getting an overseas release this month. Uh, which is great. I'm very happy that it's getting out over there because it seems like a great game. I played the demo of that one as well. Uh, and I'm I'm actually going to get the English version there because, again, it's another game I want and I like to support the fact that they're translating it into English. So Okay, okay. Well, let's stick with um, Innocence of R on the Vita then. Sure. Uh, yeah, this is a port of a DS game. Uh, when I say port, obviously going from a DS game to a Vita game, uh, you can't just port it over. It would look like garbage. Uh, but they, they did actually do it a really good job in bringing this from the DS to the Vita. I think not just myself, but uh, most of Japan included were quite surprised at the quality of the port. Um, I know that when this game was originally shown on Vita, everyone was like, oh, man, those graphics are terrible. 
Uh, it's not not graphically good. It it looks like it was ported over in you know, uh, you know, a few days or a few weeks or whatever. Uh, but when the final version came out, there were actually quite a few tweaks in the game that that really made it much more playable than the original. Uh, they bumped up your party from three members to four members, which just feels so much more natural in a game like this. Most right. Tales games, most modern Tales games these days have four characters. It just feels so much better. Uh, the graphics, to be honest, they're very sharp and colorful. Um, I'm not going to say that they're amazing graphics, and they're ne- definitely not pushing the Vita anywhere, but I, I absolutely am not going to complain about them. Uh, they're very, very colorful. They pop quite nicely. And the environments look fine. Uh, there's no issues with the graphics. So, yeah, and, unless you're, again, expecting something like Final Fantasy thirteen style quality of graphics, uh, I think you'd be quite quite pleased with this one. Uh, they've added some new anime scenes. Uh, they, you know, there's a new intro, new music intro, which is quite nice. And they just remo- removed some of the kind of archaic or annoying parts of the DS game. Which uh, were? Yeah, uh... There was kind of a some kind of system in there, and I can't remember exactly what it was. To be honest, I didn't get didn't get more than just a few hours into the original Tales of Innocence on DS before I just gave up in in frustration with it. Oh, wow. um, but there were some systems in there that I've read about, uh, and apparently they just don't exist in this version because they were just deemed as annoying and and completely removable. So they've uh, listened and, to yeah. the fans of the DS version, and they've they've yeah. they've addressed the, the issues. A much more playable RPG, which is, you know, basically all you can ask for. So, like I said, response on this one was actually quite nice. Uh, I would give it a, a nice score. I'm, I'm about 20, 20 or 25 hours in now. Um, I, I played for about 15 hours and took a break after Gravity Days and some of those other ones came out. Um, but I'm back into it now, uh, side by side with Trails in the Sky. So I'm, I'm really enjoying this one. The story is kind of strange i don't want to say cliche because it's not quite cliche but it's it's almost anime-esque in a way uh instead of being really interesting it doesn't really pull at you that well but but it's not really cliched either uh the essential story is that you uh play as this this boy who originally starts seeing these dreams about being a person uh in the past from a from a different world where he's kind of like this king, and, and he's sending his troops into battle, almost like Braveheart style. Uh, and so he he realizes that he has more of a connection with this guy than just a dream. It's almost like he's a reincarnation, or a, you know, he is this guy essentially from the past, even though he's just this shy, you know, young man in in the current uh, present. And near the beginning of the game, you end up bumping into these other people, uh, starting with a girl, and then some other characters who actually turn out to be other people in the past. They have the same connection. And once you find out about this, it kind of opens up this quest for a while. Why don't we go find out uh, who these other people are and meet up and see, you know, see what the connection is and why this is exactly happening. Uh, but at the same time, having this connection with the people in the past, it kind of grants you magical powers. This is kind of their explanation for why they can use these skills that normal people can't use. Um, and at the same time, it's almost like the X-Men feel uh, where you know they're almost kind of mutating, and the government doesn't like that, right? They're like, oh, these these people can't be good for society. They're kind of, you know, developing magic powers. So the government's kind of on you. So you're almost not a bad guy, but you're you know you're being being hunted by the government while you're trying to look for other people who are similar to you. Okay. Yeah. So this uh, this how's the um, the the battles? How's the battle system? Sure. It's uh, it's tails. Uh, you can move left and right using the D-pad. If you switch to the analog stick, you can move into the foreground and background. Uh, it's kind of strange to get used to that at first uh, because it only lets you put in certain commands using the D-pad, whereas at certain times you need to run into the background using the analog stick. But I will say that once you get used to it, it's not really a big deal. Your finger flips back and forth quite naturally. Um, but yeah, it, again, it mixes RPG battles with kind of not not fighting game-esque, but you know, forward or down or up or neutral plus a button combination there and you do your different special moves. Right. Uh, so, yeah, if you've played a Tales game before, this isn't, this isn't as deep as something like Tales of Graces F will be, but it's, it's a nice battle system. It's quite fun. Is there any so it, touchscreen yeah. implementation into this? or Just a bit. Uh, what you can do in this one is you can set abilities to your other three characters. Again, you have four characters in battle. The other three characters will act by themselves. You can kind of tell them what to do through AI. 
But you can set one ability to each of the other characters. So you could set like a cure spell to one of them, uh, you know, maybe an attack that you want to combo into on another one. And then when you touch their character portrait at the bottom of the screen during battle, they'll go ahead and use that ability. So it's, it's very simple. But, yeah, it's quite nice. Uh, it's, it's good. You know, you, you know in AI games where you're sitting there with low HP and you're screaming at your other characters to cure you and they're just running in and getting attacked. Uh, in this one, you can actually tap them and they will quickly get a cure off. So, okay. I'm kind of curious. You, this, R, this R stands for reimagined, right? Reimagined, yeah. Because they so is it yeah. themselves, obviously, because they, they did a little bit more than... You know, uh, you know, it's not a port, but it's not quite a full remake. It's a reimagine. It's kind of the word that they're using between port and remake. Yeah. So the, I was just wondering, like, what what this game needed to be reimagined the most? Like, is this reimagined as a Vita game, or is it just the natural progression of evolution, regardless of the Vita? Does it feel like it fits really well with the Vita? You know, that's a good question. Uh, I don't necessarily think that this really has much to do with the Vita in, in that aspect. Uh, they could have just as well released it as Tales of Innocence are on the 3DS uh, and done the same things to it, and nobody would have been any the wiser on that. So, no, I don't really think that the R itself has anything to do like with the Vita itself, but I think that now they are planning on using this R title for the Tales remakes on the Vita itself. Um, this was spread around the Internet, so it's not much of a spoiler However, the end of this game, uh, it, it hints at another remake uh, for Tales of Hearts, which was another Tales game that was only on the DS and only in Japan. Uh, it, it really hints at the fact that there will be a Tales of Hearts R uh, coming in the future, and everyone pretty much speculates the fact that if they include this into the ending of a Vita game, you're going to imagine the next one will also be on Vita, right? It would make right. much sense yeah. to... You know, we don't really talk about these this these genre of games too much on here so maybe some of the listeners if they've been following us maybe they're going to notice like a change in taste so sure. like, if people haven't played any of these games like how how would you explain it in a nutshell for them like sure. why like well, how would you try to hook them well the biggest part about rpg you know games in general trails in the sky what i talked about before this and tales of innocence are the biggest thing you get into with games like this is, is you know you're going to be in for a long haul. Uh, a lot of people these days expect their games to be anywhere between 5 and 12 hours, but these games are going to get you hooked for a lot longer than that. I mean, you're talking, you know, 25 to 50 hours. <laughs> All right, you need 10 lifetimes. You do, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, not, not, not for me, sorry. Um, but, yeah, you're going to want to get in. You know, the things you're going to look for to hook you are going to be the battle system is a big one because obviously you're going to be battling a lot. A uh, growth of characters, seeing where your characters start and where you think they're going to end up. I'm talking ability-wise as well as story-wise. Uh, if you can't really interface with the characters, uh, if you don't care about them 10 minutes in, you're probably not going to care about them 10 hours in, so it's probably not worth your time. Um, I find that a lot of RPG players are the same kind of people who enjoy reading books. So if you're not the kind of person who wants to sit down and read some fiction, uh, an right. RPG might not really be up your alley. For me, what I look look at RPGs at these days, uh, to me, it's almost like a book that you can play, right? It's It's got a right. great story, uh, but it's distinct. way up from Stein's Gate, of course. Right, right, yeah. Um, it's it's distinctly, these games anyway, are distinctly Japanese in a way that you, you wouldn't get, you know, just from reading a book necessarily. But you can see the art style, you get a little bit of visualization, but it still leaves things up to your imagination. Uh, and there's there's still a lot there, you know, it's, it's not always the complete package. I'm sure you guys know with Japanese storytelling, uh, a lot of that, uh, especially in games or movies, uh, sometimes they, they just want to leave things up to your imagination. They don't want to just give it to you all straight up like a Western game might. So, Of all the games Martin and I played of RPGs, Xenoblade resonated the most with me. Okay, and It definitely got me wanting to take another look at RPGs. And of course, it's a time sink. That's a hard thing. Now, the thing that you want to realize here is Xenoblade is definitely a, a modern RPG. Xenoblade did so many things right, and it had to, being a, a modern-day console Japanese RPG, a, a genre which definitely has gone downhill this generation. Uh, Xenoblade did everything pretty much right. Uh, when, I'm, when I'm talking about these handheld RPGs, at least with these two, uh, these games are going to resonate a lot more back to the days of PS2 and, and PS1 RPGs. I see. Um, so you're, you're going to be looking at 
kind of things in there that if you didn't like them when they were on the PS2 or the PS1, uh, there's not a lot changed now that, that will Yeah, make- it seems like you're just stretching an old formula. But I think Martin and I, we, we, we thought that uh, uh, Xenoblade specifically definitely need what needed to be like reimagined in a way because it was on the Wii and graphically we just kind of were like, oh, we just, what, this deserves more. Yeah. Well, I mean, the problem with Xenoblade, of course, being on Wii is that, yeah, you're playing it in standard definition, right? No matter what you do. So, yeah, I, I knew a lot of people who, who loved Xenoblade, but they, the only way they wanted to play it was on an emulator so that they could, you know, have their computer put it out in high definition. Oh, the Dolphin? Yes, through Dolphin, yeah. Yeah, it was a shame about that. I mean, it's, it was a great game, but yeah, it deserved so much more. It right. does. Someday, maybe. Someday, maybe. Anyway, <laughs> okay. Look up from that knee and see those arms super right. high up. <laughs> <laughs> well, the yeah. game deserves it. Yeah, it's probably Xenoblade. Uh, yeah. Yeah, the, the, I was I was glad that uh, it actually got a release. It was it in Europe? Yeah, Europe, and uh, now it's coming out to the States, too. Going to the States as well, right? But the yeah. localization is being done, just it's the European version that's being ported over, carried over, right? Right, as far as we know. Yeah, as far as we've heard. Uh, yeah, there were actually two games there, I'll, I'll just say real quick. Uh, so Xenoblade, it came out in Europe from Nintendo of Europe. And yeah, finally they announced that one would be coming out in the States, too, and that's Nintendo handling the publishing there. There was also one more, uh, the last story, which last is story, right? Game, yeah, so mm-hmm. which you have original Final Fantasy fame, and that one was coming out in Europe as well. Uh, it, it actually did just recently, maybe in the last week or so, um, being published by Nintendo of Europe. But apparently, Nintendo of America had no plans to release it, even though Nintendo of Europe was obviously doing an English translation for them. Uh, so that one's actually they just announced going to be handled by Xseed. Who we've talked a little bit about today. Yep. Uh, they're going to so handle. It's going to be cheap. In the states, so we don't know. At least as far as I know, if if they have got a deal with Nintendo of Europe to use their translation, or if they're completely doing their own translation, I would imagine. Is that pretty rare for them to to do it in English twice. Yes, that's strange. It's very yeah. strange. So I would imagine that Exceed and Nintendo of Europe have some deal here, where Exceed is more just acting as a publisher slash, you know. Uh, Maybe they're just going to look at the the translation a little bit and change change a few things here and there, but but yeah, we don't really know yet. Well, it, the, those those games both deserved the audience from Europe and and the states. Yeah, it, it was. I mean, when when you first heard it that these were not going to come to to e- either um, Europe or the states, it was kind of it was like, what really? I mean, yeah, these it games was palpable. You could feel everybody just well, people crying, the moaning. Yeah, yeah, they created that project rainfall. Which in the yeah, end, that's right. Was that like on Facebook? Yeah, well, it started like on Facebook. They got it onto all these petition websites. They were sending real packages to Nintendo with like letters <laughs> begging them to release these games. And and the three games is a part of that were Xenoblade uh, and Last Story, which both of those now have successful you know successful stories, U.S. and Europe. And the last one was Pandora's Tower, which is yeah. an amazing game. Yes. I believe yes, that's we like that. We like sure. that as well. Yes. That was the munt uh what is it, zombie <laughs> munching. Yeah. Yes. She would like harvest their hearts. Yeah. She'd like to eat meat. <laughs> so that one I think it's been confirmed for Europe, but I don't think that they have any deal in place for the States yet. Um but I mean the Wii is pretty much done, right? So it was a good final ride. No, absolutely. Especially- that was strong. It didn't go gent- quietly into the night. Yeah, yeah, especially for how quiet it had been for so long, you know. Yeah, I like to see that. Yeah, come full circle like that. Yeah, the, all- those those three games definitely deserve the uh, the audience. So Absolutely. Ho- hopefully, uh, Pandora's Tower will also get its uh, deserved audience as well. Yeah. Hopefully. Oh well. Okay, let's move on. Uh, Sumioni, Vida, Stephen, go. Martin, go. <laughs> Me, I've you hardly go first. I've hardly played this one. Um, um, it's, I, can okay. you refresh my memory? Have we talked about this game on here? Absolutely not. No, I can say it's a platformer. It's got a um, great touch controls. It's got a nice mechanic where you can draw on the screen. When you draw on the screen, you have uh, using uh, ink. So you have uh, at the bottom right hand corner, there's a there's a, an icon which is like water, 
And right. if you press press that, you can basically clean off the ink that you've drawn on the screen to replenish uh, your ink levels, which is quite nice. So basically, you can run through the level, and you'll have enemies on the screen. And uh, maybe they'll be too high this for is a you. Side, this is a 2D side scroll. 2D side course. scroll, yeah. So you, you'll be uh, jumping, but you can't reach them. So what you can do is you can, uh, using your ink, you can draw on a screen like a platform, and right. he'll and you can jump on that platform you've just just created. Right, and uh, it's beautifully drawn. It yeah, the, the way the ink um, just sort of takes to the screen. It reminded me sort of like the Street Fighter early Street Fighter vids with this with the way the ink. Yeah, is it looks like roundabout. Yeah. Um, yeah. traditional Japanese calligraphy. Yeah, you know, with a big paintbrush and that. So, and, and another one, if you press the uh, the R button, you freeze time. Yeah. That's right. And then you can draw on the screen. Uh, you can highlight your enemies no matter how yeah, many people there were, are. Like Japanese people were drawing a kanji characters like Dai. Dai like, and stuff like that. Yeah. Or, or bonk, or left big. to right stroke, and then like a top, down, left, and like another like an, down to the right. And it yeah. just sort of like gets everybody. Yeah, so you can, you can press uh, the L button, which freezes time, and then you can draw on the enemies. And then when you un- unpause time or unfreeze time, all those enemies that you've just highlighted with your brush now are Dropped set on the fire. Yeah. yeah, they're all set on fire. Another thing you can do is when you freeze time, you ha- in the bottom right-hand corner, you get like a, an icon, uh, but you summon this, this bird, this, this phoenix, yeah, which uh, once you on pause, uh, basically just a- a- attacks everybody on screen in a really beautiful, typical Japanese tradition, you know, uh, watercolor sumi. Yeah. yeah, so... Sumi is just ink and A is picture, so... Ink picture, ink blot, whatever. <laughs> okay, yeah. So I mean, at the end of the stage, it it counts uh, your, the time it takes you to clear the stage, and it uh, it ranks you on how well you did, like uh, total damage taken, uh, and it gives you a ranking. And with the new patch that's just come out, all of this information is now uploaded to online leaderboards. That's right. Which is it just came out on the ninth. It came out on the ninth. Yes, um, I was a little worried if they start out with, "Yeah, we've got new galleries," and like, "What? You're going to tell us that?" And then it said, "No, we also have rank mode." Yeah, which they've introduced, and then, um, yeah. So this is up on the if you go on the official site, if you have uh, Sumioni or Ink Demons, where I guess is the English title, and yeah, there's a competition. And I hope this, I hope this extends. Let me see this this conversation this uh, this competition goes to the thirtieth. When is it coming out in the states? It's towards the end of the month, right? Yeah, twenty okay. twenty third, I think. Okay, so right around there. Not. Yeah, because there's a competition, and I guess whoever has whoever is number one um, for stage five C or stage ten A, oh, okay. there are you're gonna you you get a some type of present with your score engraved in it, which isn't no. that exciting, but it's still kind of. That's yeah. very nothing. Speaking of that, uh, I'll get into that just a little bit. Uh, talking about ranking for this game, people out there might be going, this is a 2D scroll, or how exactly is this ranked? Uh, this is w- one of the things I really liked about this game is that it does have this ranking system. Uh, the one main thing that you learn very quickly in this game is while your character is up on the ink, so right. not touching the ground, it boosts your attack power increment in, in increments. Yeah, so you yeah. kind of as, as, as long as you're standing on ink in the air, uh, your your attack power goes up a little bit, and then a little bit more, and then a little bit more, and a little bit more. And as long as you can stay on the ink without actually touching the ground, right. uh, you'll keep this. The second you go and you fall and you touch the ground, uh, or it take removes damage, all of this. For that matter. Or take damage, yeah, yeah. So you have to be very careful with that. It removes it. Uh, so you're trying to create these ink lines in the right places because obviously they fade after a little while. And maybe yeah, keep... the, the, the actual skill is right when it's about to fade, jump to the yes. next one. Yeah, yeah. But at the same time, you're violently um, rubbing the back of the screen, which is a big thing because the back of the screen is uh, the, the the back touch screen is actually like uh, doubling as like uh, a grinding stone. Yeah, yeah, it's a good ink. And then when you grind the back of the screen and you're rubbing and giving it a back massage the whole time, <laughs> you're actually your ink gauge that depleted when you used it starts to go up. And it's there's actually a lot of stuff you have to work out there to well, keep yeah. up. And if you have for a long period of time, your guy eventually turns red, like a red demon. Yep. 
and that that means he he not only delivers more damage but he gets more points so yep. if you when you get to the end of the level and your guy is red and if you could just stay up in the air the whole time and constantly inflict damage you kill things really quick especially the big bosses yeah, now, if that was all, that would be great. However, on top of that, not only do they rank you on how much damage you deal during a level, but they also rank you on how fast you can actually complete the level, and it kind of balances the two right. scores out. So not uh, only do you have to get your power up as high as possible and kill things as, you know, as quickly as possible, you're trying to beat the level as soon as possible. So I was messing around with it a little bit where I would go through the level as fast as possible and I'd get like, you know, a great score on speed, but then I'd get a horrible score on damage dealt. Or I'd go through and I'd kill every single enemy, but I, and I'd get a great Basically, score on you damage. Have to draw very but small little bridges. Yes. Tiny little bridges is what it is. Throughout the whole level, essentially. Jumping perfectly, actually. Yeah. So I was getting to the point where I would draw like my, my platform where I'd be fighting on. And then after a few seconds, I'd draw another platform right below that one. So as soon as my first one faded, my guy would naturally fall onto the second one. And then I'd draw another one above it and jump back on top of it. So you kind of, right. your, your fingers are all over the place in this, but actually it's a pretty cool feeling. Uh, it's, you know, if you think about the concentration it, you required in old school 2D games to run through, jump, and attack, well, on top of all of that, now you have to keep this this ink thing going in the middle of the level. And also, like Martin was saying, you can pull up water uh, in order to erase your, your ink, but you can also use it to erase some enemies' attacks. Hmm. So you're flipping through trying to get this water to erase enemies' attacks so that you don't get hit and lose your attack power. You have to flip back over to ink to keep the ink on the level to keep going, to keep your attack power up. So we're using the water, Martin, way more than the grinding stone on the back. Yeah, more of the grindstone to try and keep my ink levels. See, that higher. was sort of grading at me. I was because I felt like I was just giving it like a ten hour, like a one hour mat back massage. Yeah, yeah I mean, it, oh, I, yeah. I think it gets a bit too much sometimes. It's a bit, yeah, it was a bit too much. I kind of wish that instead of having you rub the back, they would have included maybe some some ink replacement power ups. You know, uh, at at. Interesting I think there places are. in the level. Yeah, well, right. Interesting places is just that, it. Like you have to realize how to get to it properly without expending too much ink or something. Think, mm-hmm. uh, instead of being as straightforward as it is. Well, I, I, as you progress through the levels, there, there are um, there's like these rolling like cogs, spiked yes. cogs. Yes. And there's there's multiple cogs. There's some small ones. There's some large ones. And in between the cogs, there's like um, like sharp bamboo. And if you jump on it, you obviously uh, take damage. So you've got to strategically place small little platforms for your character to actually jump along without like being attacked by these uh, spinning cogs or jumping on uh, the carved bamboo. And it gets really tough quickly um i well i found it really tough really quickly because trying to rub the back of the screen at the same time to get more ink yeah. because you're running out of ink and you've got no time and you, you know like trying to do all this at the same time you've got these cogs rolling towards you and you're, you're rubbing the back of it and you're trying to jump to different platforms and it's a bit multitasking yeah like it's thing. really difficult to have everything going at the same time and your vita's constantly like moving you constantly <laughs> obviously because you're, you're rubbing the back you you're painting the front of the screen you're trying to platform at the same time. It's like it all gets. Sometimes you have to move forward because there's like a big enemy chasing you. Yeah, and you're getting and you, chased you just as well. Have to keep going. That, that that's another thing as well. These enemies, they just they they'll just chase you from uh, left to right, and you just got to keep running left. But you've got also you've got like enemies coming at you as well at the same time as well as the guy behind you, and you still got to create platforms and get over them. I also like the they have these like ninja hives and then these ninjas come pouring out of them. They're way up in the air, and um, of course, there's a really good um, watercolor backdrops. But they're all they're all coming out, and if you create these landings, what essentially, if you're clever about it, you can create these choke points where all these ninjas are coming down and they're coming at you like lemmings, and they're just waiting to get killed. So you can rack up these points if you. You can be taking care of guys down below, but then you keep them up in the air for a while, and then you go up and take care of them. And I think there's a really high skill curve for getting the poetry emotion to get those high scores. It's yeah, interesting to see how deep it is. There's definitely a high learning curve, especially when you're trying to uh, create platforms where your character is, as well as as well as trying to figure out, especially when you're fighting enemy, uh, the enemy bosses, which a lot of them seem to be t- uh, buildings, you know? Yeah, the first few are buildings. The first few, the first few are buildings, and you're trying to um, plot platforms for your character to land on 
Then you, you you're also trying to destroy this tower, and then then you've also got enemies archery, coming at you, archers shooting archers at you, shooting at you yeah. other samurais with 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 samurai swords coming at you, and it, it's just so much going on at the same time that it gets. I think it gets overwhelming pretty quickly. The only thing that I think the weakest link in the game is the story, and the way it, that it's told. I mean the the openings, um, the opening of the game, you have the full, the full game. Uh, you know how like in Star Wars where they open up with like uh, the credit or the the story, it's coming at you. It's like they took like all six episodes of Star Wars and just put them all together. It's that long. The story just goes on and on, and it's like Ezra's wrath was like. Come, come! It's much more complex. There's people are getting double framed, triple framed, and everybody. You don't really know what you're doing, but you know you're a pissed off Oni demon, or this, <laughs> I mean, this ink demon. But the story to me was just not told very well, and it it, it was almost like that with um, Army Corps of Darkness. Oh, the way of hell, right? It you know that they just had like just sort of the the single pane. And then it said something, and then you know your your guy is yelling at the 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 guys that you control, and I think uh, you know Gravity Days did it a little bit more, uh, had a more sophisticated way because you could actually move around the panes and it was more organic. But I mean, definitely, it's feeling like these are all you know, like launch window games, and it can't be helped to an extent. But that's where I'd say it's just kind of it's, it's just left wanting more. So the story itself, right? Does it really, not matter. It's just an arcade side scroller. If you just think of it as that, it's okay. But it, it's not though, because there's so many things you've got going on. You got front and front and rear touch, you know. And uh, well, yeah, oh, right, right, yeah. It's a side scroller, right? And there's a lot more thrown on top of it. That yeah, adds the depth there mechanically. Yeah, I. <laughs> As a platformer, I enjoy it, but because it's got the other elements of of the touching the screen and and stuff, it just I think it just gets too much too quickly. Yeah, if it wasn't for less rubbing in the back. Yeah, I think that's really what what I don't want to say kills it, but what brings it down is, I mean they they did really really a good job with all the functions uh, built into the Vita here, but. We don't really need to be rubbing the back the entire time we're playing. <laughs> no, I, I don't. Th- I don't think the back rub is necessary. No, and then like you, I, I took Sumier in college here, and you know, <laughs> you, that's a very relaxing thing. It's supposed to be. You're sitting there, and you're grinding, and you smell the ink, and you start to decide what you want to draw. And not here, man. You're just you're just sway, swiping, 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 and sweating. It's not fun. <laughs> As we said before, it looks beautiful. I think they make drawing the little, just a little landings and jumping perfectly. Maybe there's less rubbing and yeah. just more expert jumping. Yeah, I enjoy creating my platforms and uh, attacking people from platforms I create and staying in the air and as long red. as I can. Turn yeah, red. I'm, I'm turning red and going crazy. But I, yeah, yeah. The, the, as, as you said before, the, uh, the spinning plates. Yeah, it's uh, it's tough. It's tough. For $20, though, on the US PSN, totally worth it, I would you, say. If you're a good side-scrolling gamer and you're, you're bored of traditional stuff, this is... Yeah, this I mean, because this, this offers something very different and, and, and something that maybe no one's really played before with the uh, the front and rear touch elements to it. So, I mean, for for, for 20 bucks, I definitely recommend it, but it, I definitely uh, warn people that it's not your traditional side-scrolling platformer. It's got good music, though. It's, it's got, got a lot like, of Koto music. Yes. And, uh, yeah. Very traditional Japanese music, and I, I like I like that a lot. Yeah, I do recommend it, but I just just warn people that right. expect something slightly different. Some caveats there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. Okay. Cool. Oh, Steve, you had something on the iPad, right? What are we talking about? The iPhone? Oh, yeah. This game is... Oh, I've really become addicted to this game. So, okay. So... <laughs> So this game is called Shiharai Gijutsu Kente. So um, if you've if you've lived in Japan, almost everybody at one point, unless you're anal retentive, ends up with pockets full of overflowing with change. <laughs> and um, this there's this app, and it essentially teaches you how to keep your change to a minimum. So what it what it translates into it's I think it's payment tech. Because we on Game Center, it has to have an English name for it as well. But you would have you have first of all you have to get this on the Japanese iTunes, 
Um, we'll, maybe, we'll provide a, a little link for you. It's free, which is why I highly recommend it. But basically, um, you have the game starts out with uh, you have a virtual wallet, and it's full of uh, it's on the bottom of the screen. And it includes in that virtual wallet, you have one yen, five yen, ten yen, fifty yen, hundred yen, five hundred yen, and then a say yen note. And then above that, um, there is a um, what would you call those, those money trays in Japan? And you guys all know about if you ever come to Japan, you're going to see the money tray. Yes. Yep. What, what you guys? What, what's with the money tray? Yeah, you don't hand the money from hand to hand. I don't care how exactly. close you're standing to the other person. You take the money out of your wallet and you put it in the money tray, and then they pick right. it up from there. But when they and give then, you the money back, they put it in your hand and like touch your hand. They do. What's that about? But they, so, in some, yeah. They, they don't want to handle the money that you give them, but the money that they give you, they got to touch your hand. It's because they're they're um, being humble about receiving money from you, whereas they're just giving you money back that you deserve. It's like, <laughs> so you That's deserve a nice hand funny. rub. Yeah, there's a there's a logic to it, but it, sometimes they even have two trays because they'll <laughs> put the money down and then they'll actually put the money on a separate tray up above, and then you're just like, yeah, for real, you yeah, just went tray to tray, amazing. And um, so anyway, yeah, anything. Is certain in Japan, death taxes, money trays. So, but yeah, what you have to do is there's going to be a price that appears on the screen, and you have to try to make exact change. You have to try to give them exact price. So if it's four fifty three, you have to use from your virtual wallet four fifty three, and then press the pay button, and then of course it takes that money from there and it will give you a Saiyan note. So you can never run out of money. If you ever start running out, it will always replenish with a Saiyan note. And your object is is to build up these combos where you're um, you're getting rid of the change as much as possible. And if you bro- if you overchange, meaning you have over twenty coins, you'll get penalized. And meanwhile, the clock is ticking down. And every time you get a combo, you'll get rewarded extra points on the clock. And uh, if you let's say it's like uh, 497 and you don't have 497 but you have 500 yen you have a 500 yen coin which is like five bucks you give that okay you almost made you, you were close but you were three over so it will give you like two seconds bonus so the only way to keep the clock up in the air is to get exact change so the battle becomes finding a way to not go over 20 coins but and keeping it so that you have lots of one yens and five yens and ten yens coming back, and uh, when you get combos, your points exponentially grow more and more. And uh, it's what's really funny is that they actually have uh, a rating system that they give you at the end, and uh, they 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 tell you like what how good your uh, how good your paying skills are, and they like start you off as like preschool and like <laughs> junior high school. Or a high school, or then they'll say like, like th- I think third year convenient part timer, or then they'll say like conveni tencho, which is like the head of the conveni- con- convenience store or something like that. And it keeps going on and on to like 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 full fledged like uh, shakaijin they call it, like a full fledged worker, nice you know in society. Or then you know they even go up to like CEO and stuff like that, and they keep <laughs> these these actually those names is a drive to like get better and better. And of course, you know, Game Center, the whole leaderboard system is everything. So you just want to get higher and higher up. But it's free and actually, it's really addictive. So if you've never come to Japan and uh, you're not even familiar with the money system, you know, you could do this. Um, but actually, the really funny thing about it is, until I played this game, I've always been. I always say in Japanese tekito, which is right. like you don't you don't you can't be bothered to like fish for the exact change. You just like plop another Saiyan note down. But mm-hmm. because of seeing this virtual like money like um the money tray, the moment after playing this game sort of religiously for about a week on and off, because my girlfriend turned me on to this game because she really liked it. I heard about it from her actually. And uh so when I see the money tray, I'm like compelled to give make exact change now in real life. No, I've always been the uh, exact change And I know Martin, thing. I think you've always been that way. So yeah, well, my wife I think naturally you'll be really me. good at this game. My wife does, did, it, did that to me. So 
Oh, yeah. really? She did that to you? Yeah, she, she, she made you that way? That. Yeah, she <laughs> made me that way. I used to just do what you used to do, just throw a, 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 a note or a, a bill on the... <laughs> in in the uh, in the money tray, and then yeah, right. my wife was like, "What are you doing? Your wallet weighs like three tons." <laughs> <laughs> See, for me, I have a tray on my computer desk, and it's probably got about I don't know two hundred yen worth of worth of ones and fives and tens in there. You know, it's just it's always full. It's so annoying. Eventually, I take the weight out of my wallet. So this is definitely something that sounds interesting. I'm definitely going to check this yeah. out. Sounds I really uh, recommend it, and I hope you report back on The average rating on iTunes was four out of five, and right. it's free. Um, and uh, you know when you go to the, the store and sometimes you give a girl, like you want to get exact change back, and, and she looks at you like, huh? And she's right. like, she hasn't, pre- she hasn't registered exactly that you've done it just right. You've got like the Shiharai Gijutsu Kente CEO level. Right. <laughs> and then she presses a register and then she gets that, ah, she gets the ah moment. And she right. goes, I, I see, see what he's did. doing. So if you want to get respect from the hot, you know, cash, cashier checks, you know, this awesome. is another awesome. way. <laughs> Definitely something I wanted. So you, you want to hook up with the convenience store girl, eh? Why? Why not? There are, She's there got are all the money right do, under man. her fingertips. Yes. Excellent, excellent. So, th- so this is free, right? And this is totally free. And this is the first game my girlfriend has recommended, and like I really got into it. And other people, I've seen other people playing it. It's in Japan, I guess it's it's kind of taken a groundswell, and people a lot of people playing it. Awesome. And who are good at it too, because I've I've gotten up to I'm I'm past Shakai Jin, which is you know. I'm a full fledged adult right now. <laughs> nice, nice. I, I, and I got the Konbini Tensho, which is like the, the head of the convenience store, which was me like a big moment. So. Okay, so <laughs> where are you at now? Like Don Quixote. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay, sweet. Let's move on. Uh, what else have we got? Dragon's Dog Turd, as I call oh, it. Oh, Dragon's uh, Dog Turd. That's right. Right, so I was, um, I think I got technically knocked out of the last podcast. Yes. And uh, I was at the Kanshasai in um, Akihabara. In Akihabara. Uh-huh. And uh, they, they had um, long lines there that I wasn't able – so I wasn't able to let, uh, play a lot of the like the Hatsu play games. They had um, Raccoon City. Yeah. Crimson, Biohazard. The dragon game, right? They had um, right um, Crimson Dragon. They had Diabolical Pitch from Suda51 uh-huh. there. And uh, a lot of those games were full, so I just – I jumped in on it and played it. And uh, actually, I came out enjoying it. And then uh, Martin was like, well, what did you play? What did you play? There's no, there's nothing out. And then I told him what I played. And he said, well, I played that back at Tokyo Game Show, and it sucked. <laughs> and you kept calling. And you called it back in our, when we did our TGS recap. Uh, you called it Dog Turd. Yeah. Devil's... Uh- Dragon's Dog Turd. <laughs> but actually, it was uh, the the culmination of the demo ended up with a, a lion with a with like a goat humping it with a snake for a tail. So it was <laughs> yeah. like a, it was one of those turds. But it was a it was a good kind of turd because it was a type <laughs> of turd that you could actually jump on and hang on to. Who wants to jump on a turd? And you don't get messy. Uh, it's it's got a mane that you can hold on to, and you. It was Damn, I, what you been eating? You been eating too much fiber? All, all the uh, all the uh, enemies that I, I mean, all the NPCs that I was playing with, um, you're everyone's swinging around on this big creature, and you're trying to kill it. And uh, I just had a lot of fun with it, and the controls seemed really tight, and uh, it didn't really translate well when I was just watching the game. I see, I saw the game at Tokyo sh- Game Show on the Xbox and PlayStation Three, and went meh. I'll pass, and I've seen videos of it come out. But after playing it and then seeing the new demo, or not the new demo, but the new video that came out, like, a, like was it a week a week ago or so? It was like a big dragon outside. Right. Did you guys see that? And he's yeah, that's the, the, the actually it, flies in, up in the air real high, and you're holding on. In the demo, there's two uh, missions to play. There's one in the dungeon, and there's one outside, right? Okay, that's what and that is. The one outside is you're chasing you're completely the, lost. Yeah, in, in in the uh in like a load of fields, and and there's like a castle and stuff, and there's a dragon flying around, and you got to take the dragon down, right? Yeah, 
Yeah, well, uh, that was a, that was what I played, and the the, uh, the other one is in the dungeons where you're after that hybrid lion snake type thing, and you're in dungeons, right? With yeah, you have to cut off the tail, tail, and right? You know, yes, first, and you have to work your way up. Well, the thing I, I that frustrated me with this game was 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 not only the the terrible AI, which they always seem to get in your way, and they never did what you wanted them to do. Uh, was also the, the the absolutely awful screen tearing, which was so apparent. No matter. I wonder if I had a more recent build than you. I don't think I don't understand. They wouldn't make a new wouldn't build for for a, a street demo. Right. You know how much it costs to to pull a team off m- making a game to make a demo. Now, yeah. Martin, did you play the Xbox or the PS3 version? Both. Okay. Which was um, which was better? <laughs> <laughs> this what, is not going to end well. I <laughs> well, think you thought said the PlayStation Three was worse. Yeah, the PlayStation Three was worse. The frame rate was lower. It didn't have as much screen tear, and the 360 had more screen tear, but the PlayStation had a lower frame rate. Well, I don't know. It's definitely gotten me interested. Really? Yeah, I walked. I walked away from it when quite quite enjoyed it i think it's the it's fantasy as well and i really don't like fantasy i've never watched i will not watch any lord of the rings movies because i can't stand yeah, fantasy you no know you're a mood killer so so yeah so maybe it's that it's the actual setting that made me think oh god i don't like this I, I'm, I'm not sure but but I, I didn't think it played well the ai really frustrated me the screen tearing was awful it, well, we, to be honest, we I don't think like it looked it was great. Sort of like a Dark Souls RPG. Well, I can yeah. put up with Dark Souls because it's fair uh, most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> most of the time, it's pretty fair. But in Dragon's Dogma, it, I don't know the AI. It was just so like pathetic at times. It was it was just like I felt like Azura, and I just wanted to run around and just kill everybody. I don't. I like <laughs> the way the the running mechanic and the jumping mechanic and then the grabbing and it just all seemed pretty tight. Or maybe it is. A different build I, i'm I'm not sure but i i wasn't impressed whatsoever so i it's mean just a, it's a shame that you know you don't have you don't have co-op play with, I, it's, a damn shame. yeah there's no co-op you talk on about either. the bad you know ai you know, that could be replaced you know yeah hopefully hopefully it comes out in may right yeah the end of may it's out in the end of may so to be honest i think it's probably in the end of testing now so if it's not fixed now it won't be fixed Unless they can patch AI, and then a diabolical pitch was nuts. That was quintessential Suda Fifty One man. That guy is insane. Uh-huh. I, that game just threw me into a loop. Did not. Ex- I mean, he he talks about. Uh, he was talking. He was pontificating up on stage because he was actually there, and uh, he was talking about how his games are perfect for nabe parties. <laughs> you know, like that's where they Japan. I got like the, the one pot cooking right everyone just sort of sits there and you know you got a bunch of people getting drunk and eating good food i'm like yeah that's i could i could take a hit from that pipe i, yeah. c- I could see where you're getting <laughs> at there um you know it's that's perfect opportunity to get up and make a fool out of yourself in this game diabolical pitch which was like code what was that code name d i believe back the old the old name of it and you have like two has been pitchers baseball pitchers and they're they've got these like special um, arm implants, sort of like prosthetics that they put on that can make them throw these crazy fireball fast pitches and stuff like that. And you're in this theme park. And you've got these elephants on their hind legs with red eyes and they're trying to kill you and you're throwing fastballs at them and killing them and you're getting coins for some reason. And It's just like, what? But it's, 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 it's kind of it's kind of crazy that and you have to like work as a team and there's some mo- moments where they throw these like power saw blades at you and you have to jump up and they're like a complete loon, or the person falls on the ground and you have to help pick them up and because you can play with two people together which is the big thing you're playing together as a team so two drunk people at the nabe part <laughs> that game kind of was like oh god people are gonna pay for this but, uh, <laughs> I don't know. And, but I, I like Biohazard a lot. I think that was probably the def, definitely the game of the, the whole show. I, I'm not really much a, a fan of the series. Like I don't, we, we played Revelations, right, Martin? Yeah. And uh, we, we quite like that. Just purely talking about the gaming mechanics, I, was, I liked how quick he could draw the, take the gun up and aim. 
you know, before he's looked, the time from just holding the gun plane to looking down the barrel. And uh, you you could play with a bunch of other people. Right. And the, the, that the, that type of co-op play that I was talking about, I would like in, you know, Dragon's Dogma. This is that, Slant 6, right? That's right. Okay, so it's a Western developed game. Not right. And that. that's it's exactly what you want. Maybe for a shooter. For the shooter, right? Right, right. Okay, good. So I mean, so, so it was great. It was awesome to play it. The, the, maybe like the, the in binary domain, you know, when you would hit the head and the way it registered, like. But just to tell you, give credit to binary domain, I felt like that felt a lot better than like shooting zombies in the head in this game. It wasn't registering right, is nearly as good. So there's certain some maybe maybe early kinks with it, but it, uh, issues with it, but. Uh, it's looking like it's shaping up to be a good shooter. Cool. So it's, did you actually get hands-on with it? or were you Yeah, just yeah, watching? I played 15 minutes of it. Oh, okay, okay. So as soon as you got into it, was does it feel Western as soon as you got hold of it? Yes. Well, yeah, there's just, just, like I said, the animation of him pulling the gun up right away, and it's like, yeah, I'm here to kill. And, it's, and you have to work with a team of people, and there's like... Uh, Can you, you move and these, shoot at the same time? What's that? Can you can you move and shoot at the same yes, time? Yeah, right. Okay. And then you can all you have to get like these doors, but if you don't have everybody there together, you know that you can't move to the next level. So there has to be cooperation. Right. And I've, you know, we weren't getting that, and you're just like stressed. You only have 15 minutes to play, and I'm like, get yeah, everyone, get to the damn door. But I don't know these people, so how do I yell at them? <laughs> but uh, yeah, so. It, it, I'm very interested in the game. I think uh, I'm going to jump in on that one. I'm going to get that game. Cool, cool. Alrighty, sweet. Is that uh, is that? What we also have left? Uh, Steel Battalion, Martin. That's that game got a game release date. It got a release date, right? When when's what? that coming out? Steel Battalion uh, in Japan. Uh, what was it? Uh, June twenty first. Yeah. Yeah, sounds right. Yeah, June twenty first. Game is looking starting to shape up. Looking like it could be the game we hoped it would be, like way back in the day. When we I don't know about we, the... maybe you, not we. <laughs> okay, right. I was not. I'm not looking forward to it whatsoever. It, no, I don't. Well, I, I for one. Did you buy the you original one like on the Xbox? Game. No way. That was I didn't have the money back then to buy that. So, game. so why are you looking forward to this one? Well, what I wanted out of the Connect from the beginning was having the ability to. Marry the two controls, not just have connect only, but play the play the large portion of the game using the controller, and then finding intelligent ways to to utilize connect to make it more immersive. Sure. And one thing that they're doing with the game is all the the moving and actual moving of the mech and shooting is all going to be done with the controller. But when you're actually you're in when you're in the cockpit with three other guys and you want to look over to your left and look over to your right you swing your hand and then the screen turns over and you can or you want to um, punch in some controls because obviously they're taking away the, the 200 hundred dollar controller and but they're allowing you to interact with it you know more minority report minority report style so you're poking at things and you, you actually have to stand up or something if you want to open up the hatch and stuff like so that so you said you're taking your hands off the controller to fl- th- throw your arms right and left right one one arm to the right one arm to the left is that not like affecting your game like you're taking your hands off the controller. If you, if you want to look at a guy, though, when you think about it, I mean, if you're in real life, you're going to be looking over to your left. You are taking yourself away from the controls in a way, in a way. And like maybe one guy freaks out, and actually you can punch him in the face and make him snap out of it. So you start punching with your arm, and it sounds like they're they're trying to come up with these very dramatic points and sell like a very dramatic story where you have guys being subjected to battle fatigue. And they just like they lose it, and you know you, you're in the, you're you're sharing the same foxhole with this guy, and if he doesn't, you know, load the load the ammo into the gun, you're all gonna die, and you freak out, you, you punch him and make him snap out of it, and there's a that whole dynamic there of sharing the foxhole. With but if you if you look right or left, you st- I mean if you're in a tank and you look right or left, you still got your hands on the controller, right? In a tank, yeah, yeah. but I mean you're still you have one hand though. I mean, I don't know. I I still think it doesn't detract, and it makes it more immersive. So you're sacrificing. I'm going to acknowledge your point. You're 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 definitely sacrificing some of the controls, but in 
in return for that, I feel like you're getting a little bit more immersion. I feel anyway. Okay. Okay. Kind of don't agree, but okay. <laughs> I don't agree with taking your hands off the controller to to get something else out of it. I think if you're taking your hands off the controller, you're taking yourself out of the game. I, that's what I don't know. Yeah, I wouldn't want to necessarily like touch the. I'm just thinking like how they would resolve that with you know you gotta use the D pad or something. Can like you not that. just so move your head? Head tracking would right. head tracking do that instead of actually taking your arm off to like wave. But if you move your head to the left, you're you're taking your eyes off the screen a little bit. I'd see. I don't know. Well, the head. Well, not really. I mean, Forza does it, and it, you, you don't really. Oh, not not. Yeah, Forza. I, uh, I did try Forza as well, and I just didn't. I felt like I was. You know, one eye was training on the screen, sort of. Because well, I was, you don't really have to move it that much. You're, it's subtle, but it, yeah. I mean, when I drive my car, when I, if I look left or right, I'm looking at my peripheral vision, right? I'm not like turning my head like right, right. Or, or left. I think that like, what you're talking about is like something I'd like to see in in exchange for that. But I and I, I like that, but. I, I just think that, that this is harnessing the potential to connect a little better. It's not just one or the other. It's two, I guess, is the point I'm trying to make. Okay. Two together. How it's implemented, yeah, it could be done in a more elegant way. But, okay. Uh, Kyle, anyway, do you, ha- do you have one of, the fir- one of the first games that's capitalizing on this. Okay. D- Kyle, do you have Connect at all? I don't, no. I, uh, I considered buying one for the family more than anything, but there just aren't any apps, killer apps on there for me that I'm interested in yet. Uh, maybe that Crimson Dragon that comes out will push me over the edge, but I just was never, I mean, even starting when I, when I first got the Wii, uh, you know, I still look at a lot of it as, as somewhat gimmicky gaming, you know. Right, yeah, okay. Most cool. people, who though, who, who play it, Yes, and point, that's what I hear. I, I they, mess they get with this it a experience, bit, but... and everyone gets excited about it. Sure, sure. Even it, if it's um, the excitement of playing with people who otherwise would never play a video game, right? It's just and like having everybody is. engaged who's watching, or there's different types of feelings, but it's they're all also good, and it doesn't sure. affect core gaming. You yeah. can't have one or the other. It's not zero sum. Right. Well, for me, for me in particular, I, I actually did buy the original Steel Battalion back when I was 17 or 18. Wow, major uh, respect. With the huge controller. So uh, that's the kind of gaming experience I wow, like. I like man. the big that's, controller. That's mad, mad props. <laughs> yeah, I had the you know Steel Battalion controller, my virtual on twin sticks. Yeah, I mean. Do you have like camo gaming pants or something? Oh, yeah. <laughs> All about the, uh, the, the awesome peripherals. But uh you know they they've definitely been overdone. That's for sure. But but yeah, there were some some cool stuff back. In I there. think the biggest, the, the saddest point of all this is that uh you know they they couldn't find a way to make that somehow compatible. Right. Yeah. It is. Wow, you bought that huge controller. I did. He you couldn't. You could kill yourself, right? Like there was no. Yeah, legit... There was. A did you bu- play both games? I didn't. I only played the first one. You only played the first one after buying that. Yeah, and to be honest, I didn't even play it that much. <laughs> wow. So this is going to reflect poor, poorly on me, but uh, I, I lost points it. in my book real quick. Yeah. <laughs> I did buy it, uh, and I, I probably played the first one for maybe four or five hours or so, and I uh, I enjoyed it, but it, it wasn't quite, I guess, uh, I, I, I didn't study it enough, I guess, to, to be good enough at it to really get it. It's full potential. There's people who still play that, apparently. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I know. I know. What is that? The tunneler they use or something to play yes. online? Tunneler, yeah. Wow. <laughs> wow. I, I didn't, you are an enigma to me. I don't know. I don't know who you are. <laughs> I don't, yeah. I didn't, I don't know anybody who owns one. Well, they're pretty rare. Uh, and they were, you know, they were shipped in low quantities and then reshipped once or twice. But yeah, did you sell rare. it? I did. I, I think I bought it. The MSRP was 200 and I worked at a game shop at the time. I think I got it for 10 or 20% off. But I ended up selling it later for something like 300 bucks or so. so I, oh, whoa. Yeah, so I, I sold it. I don't know if it was the right time. I didn't choose a convenient time to sell it. I think it was actually the first time that I moved to Japan. That wait, I was wait, like, wait, say that again. You just said you bought it for 200 and sold it for three. Right, right, yes. Because, because it became fair. A- uh-huh. No, I, I, I'm, what, I, what I meant by that was I didn't like – I wasn't looking and like, okay, now now seems like a nice time to sell it for a lot more money. 
I didn't do that. I, I try not to do that on principle. You know, I, I'm not, you know, I am a bit of a collector, but I'm not really a reseller. But I think when I did sell it, it was because I was moving to Japan for the first time. And it was like, where the hell am I putting this thing? <laughs> I, I don't think my mom would have wanted me to keep it around her house. And I definitely wasn't lugging it to the to, to Japan with me. That would have cost more than my luggage, you know, to get over here. So. Yeah. So yeah, when I did look at it, this was probably around 2005 or so. It was yeah, it was worth quite a bit, and yeah, I sold it. Wow, I re- I remember unboxing one because uh, I worked in a game store as well, huh. just before I came to uh, Japan, huh. and uh, I remember unboxing it as well. And it took like 20 minutes to, to put it together and stuff. Did I I, I screws yeah, it came in three pieces, it came in plus three pieces, the, yeah, screws and stuff Pedals underneath well. of it. Pedal, that's right, yeah, yeah. It had like screws. You needed a screwdriver for it. The whole it was just like really, and it was like um, uh, like an eject button which was under a tab, right? Yeah, you had right. to flip the little. It will, ki- it will erase your save. Up. Yep, that's right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that was serious. You don't press that right before you die. It was almost like hilarious. It was almost like this inside joke. You know, thinking back on it, I think one of the reasons for me that that I, this didn't come out more was, come on, you needed to put the whole damn thing onto a table to play it with. Yeah, you had to have like perfect positioning. You had to be sitting at a chair with your feet on the pedals. And my my gaming setup did not have a you know a waist high table. Right in front of the TV at most, you know, most times. So, no, nah, it was quite funny. But no, I I think that thing was awesome. The fact that it actually got produced and released. It is amazing. On the actually, Xbox. he said it, he'll never do it again. On what's well, his, no, I can't his no. name, but yeah, they did not make. I don't money think he. It. It's not that he's ever going to do it again. I don't think the publishers ever going to give him the money to do it again. Publishers will never allow anyone to do anything like that again. I mean, that's insane. Yeah, especially this, it was in this day and age. And, yeah, bringing it home. I think that's the whole reason I bought it was it was you just even knew at the time it was just what the hell is this thing? <laughs> I mean, it was just epic. It was amazing. I mean, I had I had played like Mech Warrior with a little joystick, you know, back 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 in the day, and this was like that on, you know, times twenty on crack and steroids. And, and wasn't there like a little like jukebox in there, and you could like listen to music on there and. I think there was, wasn't there? I can't, I can't remember exactly what it was, but, but yeah, there was something. I loved it. Yeah. <sighs> Damn. Oh, well. Okay, cool. Hope so it's good. Is the 12-year-old that... in me hopes it's good. Yeah, yeah. Have you got anything more to say on it? Or No. No? All righty. So let's get out of playing games and let's move into uh, PlayStation Vita Heaven. <laughs> We've died and gone to heaven? No. No, no. Maybe. I don't know. I was kind of disappointed. <laughs> I was all ready for this all week, and I was like, "Yeah, I was, I was, I was kind of fired up for it." And uh, just as I was about to uh, go watch it, I had to bathe my kids. <laughs> <laughs> well, these things happen. You chose wisely. Maybe. Oh, did I? Okay, give me the no, rundown. I, then. I may be old. I may be. You don't want dirty children, so yeah, you chose true. wisely. That's true. Okay, well, well, hit me up then. Tell me what was all about, what was all about, or what it, it was all about. Sorry, I'm falling asleep. Go for it. You want to go, Steve? You want me to go? I think Kyle should um, do this I, one. Yeah, why uh, don't you go? You talk about it. And... All right, let me go ahead and start this. I think my opinion on this is going to be different from the majority of people that I've heard. Um, I wasn't disappointed with this much at all. Uh, originally, when I when I first when it first came up and and everything was there and you know I was I was kind of surfing forums at the time because I was actually at work so I couldn't I couldn't watch it uh, I was kind of following what was supposed to be a live blog however this was not actually a conference uh, that was kind of a mistranslation or a miss uh, just a mistake really Can on you talk on about the part. whole uh, envelope and how it was really presented in Japanese so that sure. Sure, we get sure. The facts straight first. Before let's get the we... facts straight. Yeah, let's, let's do get the that. Facts straight. Um, so Sony put up, and I can't remember when it was. It was last week, sometime. Uh, they put up a website for this, and they put up a picture of what looks to be an open envelope with with a note, and the note basically says, "Welcome, PlayStation Vita video game heaven, March 9th uh, from eight o'clock," and so. It does not use the word conference. It does not use the word live 
blog. It doesn't use any words at all. What to words tell did you they clearly. use? Like just pick out one or two or three words in Japanese. What did they use? Yeah, sure. I'm, I'm looking at the invitation now. They use otoroke itashimasu. So we'll, okay, we'll deliver, deliver to you. Yeah. They also use uh, hapyo, so kind of announce. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. That's really what it says. So it doesn't say. What else? Did they have koshin, I think. Oh, yeah, koshin. Yep, yep. Which is yes, just like update or refresh. Now yes. that's like, if anything, that's the one word where it's not really a broadcast. It's like no, just no. refresh your screen so that you can see the videos that are on there. Even. It really is. So, yeah, I mean, and let's look at this. Uh, I'll go ahead and just pop off a quick translation of what this says. So essentially it says we will talk about unannounced Vita titles. We will talk about new information on titles that have already Check. Announced. Check. We will talk about download contents for titles that are already out there. Good. And we will talk about uh, various hardware functions. And I think what most people missed on that one was it was like, oh, hardware functions, man. They're going to put in. They're going to put in PS One support, or they're going to talk about some awesome new functions. Well, what this was is this was Sony's way of actually introducing the Vita to everyone including people who don't know anything about the Vita. So they're actually showing off near. They're showing off, you know, uh, cross-play with, with PSPs. And so there people are, still don't necessarily understand how to use. Exactly. And so they're talking about, hey, it, it doesn't say in here we're going to show off new functions. So that was one thing as I originally read through it. I was like, oh, it just talks about we're going to show off functions. So in looking at the way that this came up and the way that these videos are on here on the site, I see absolutely nothing wrong with it. Uh, so they delivered. They delivered to me. And, and I'm saying that as in their goal was to raise awareness of the PS Vita. They wanted to show off some new stuff. Hello, we got Fantasy Star Online 2 announced for the Vita. Uh, the, you know, 2013, uh, no, let's be serious. 2013, and, and I am happy to admit, well, not happy, but I will gladly admit that that's just, it's almost like, okay, did you really need to show this off now? It was almost like your your goals for this. Everyone, of course, they're like, "Oh, we want we want a we want a mega announcement. We want some kind of mega announcement." But look at what this was. This is not a forum for, especially a third party, to show off some kind of mega title. If there's some new mega announcement, especially for Japan, it's usually handled by that company's conference. So if Capcom wants to announce an awesome new title, or uh, you know. Another company, Square Enix, wants to announce a new title. Or if Konami wanted to announce a new title, which Konami sucks now, so they're not going to. But but if one of these companies wanted to announce a big title, they would do it on their own time. They wouldn't give the glory to Sony, first of all. And second of all, this wasn't a conference in the first place. That Everyone kept saying, oh, it's a conference, or it's at least going to be a, a video put up. And you know, they were, everyone was saying, like, oh, Sony's completely copying Nintendo Direct. This is absolutely different from Nintendo Direct. Nintendo Direct was one video that was put up and, and it was just basically one guy talking for a lot of it and then it kind of showed some other stuff. No, this is various videos showing off various functions of the Vita, various new games, various games in development. Sony went out to four different developers' places, uh, interviewed them and asked them, what, what is the Vita to you? What do you think this machine will be in the future? And to be honest, I watched through each of these videos at least twice. I found them pretty interesting not like amazing, nothing mind blowing, but I like to hear what these guys had to honestly say about the Vita and what they thought about the future of handheld gaming. And and maybe it's just me as a handheld gamer. Period. But you know, again, not exclusively, but but recently a big time handheld gamer. Uh, maybe that's just me. But but it got me. Pretty I just want to take issue with you there because everything I think everything was right the way you they they looking in the details what's in that envelope they delivered. Yeah. I think outside of that envelope, they had something. They had heaven. Uh-huh. When you have heaven there, yeah. people yeah. are going to all immediately <laughs> revert back to their like um, pie in the sky well, no, dream of what and, they want for everything. Yeah. And let me say this now before I, we get too deep into this because I've already gotten kind of deep into this. The PlayStation Vita is selling horribly in Japan currently. Very, very poorly. <laughs> That's an understatement. 
And this conference did absolutely nothing. Nothing. It's not a conference. Uh, excuse me. See, there, there <laughs> it was I seven, what was it, there. eight YouTube videos? Let's be real here. There's a lot more up now, actually. There, there are quite a few up there. If, if you uh, open up all of the tabs, there so are So they've been probably, cochining since, updating uh, I think since? Actually, all came up at once, but the, the, the less important ones are kind of hidden beneath the rest of them. Oh, right. But this, this update, this, and again, yeah, the word head is just awful, but... But this update here, it did absolutely nothing to sell Vitas. Uh, I, I get that they're trying to raise awareness to people who don't know much about the Vita, but this isn't the place to do it. Advertising is the place to do that. You know, People want to see it on TV while they're watching whatever they watch. I don't even want to go into that. But, but yeah, I mean, this is not going to sell Vitas. Uh, and the announcement of Fantasy Star Online 2 is great. Like I previously said, I'm excited for it, but... Yeah, it was more like a looking forward, if yes. anything. Well, and, not, and not gaming I, heaven. Right. No. And and now as that far you from heaven as far up, as I was awful. concerned. That's, that's absolutely right. But you know, pretty much every console that Sony has released since the PS2 has been a slow burn console. Especially if you look at the Japan side of things. PS2 came out with limited software, and it took forever. It was pretty much until Final Fantasy X came out before that really picked up. PSP came out and it really took a while to get some quality games and it wasn't even until Monster Hunter really took off that that console really started taking off and became more than just old PlayStation ports and things like that. PS3, I mean, I don't even need to bring that up. We all know how poorly that that did until, you know, Metal Gear Solid 4 came out and even past that. So on one hand, I do understand that Sony is kind of looking at this as a slow burn like, look, we do have stuff coming in the pipeline. And so everyone's like, what are they going to do now? This thing's going to die. This thing's going to die. And it's not that Sony's not worried. I mean, come on. The sales of this thing has been, have been horrible here yeah, in they, Japan. They have to be worried but I don't, now. I don't think Sony's going, oh, well, if, if we don't sell more than 10,000 units in the next four months, well, the Vita's going to disappear. I don't think Sony's worried about that. And obviously, they, they don't have as much money as someone like Nintendo or Microsoft does, but they ultimately – have to decide their own fate and decide exactly how they're going to do this. And and from this conference, after I had a day to think about it, not a um, conference. Thank you very much. We need to, <laughs> we need to get that on a soundboard. Jeez, the Gestapo. From this up, from this heaven of gaming, whateverness. Uh, what what I saw was just that. And after thinking about it for a day, is just that Sony's again taking the slow burn approach. So it's going to take some time. We need probably to wait until a third party gets on board that introduces something either new or something that everyone wants. But is there anything, like even though 3DS took forever to get out the games to get them where they are at this exact moment, at least they were on the horizon, right, from the beginning. Right. Right. So they don't – this did not paint a good horizon Mm. even. Really? It, like, uh, what, no, as good as okay. 3DS? No, 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 absolutely not. No, no, no. And that, that's another thing that I always bring up when I talk about Vita and 3DS together, is I do not expect the Vita to ever do what the 3DS has done. I don't expect it to ever get up to the 3DS's scale. So we need to get right. that out of the way okay. first. All right, right. However, for me, as a Japanese gamer and a Vita owner, I like what's on the horizon, but... Right. Yes, you're not introducing anything that's going to sell Vitas to people that don't have them. All three of us have Vitas, right? So we we are obviously in that early adopter crowd where this kind of thing can happen. And so, you know, no matter what we do now, it doesn't matter. We already bought the Vita. So what Sony needs to do is sell the Vita to new people. However, for me as a Vita owner, and again as an RPG player, which the two of you are, obviously aren't aren't quite so into that, but I mean, I have Persona 4 coming out soon. Uh, I have, you know, Zero no Kiseki, the, the full voice version with 156 or whatever fully voiced characters. Uh, if, if you saw the, the, the Heaven video for that, I think level see, five could have used a few of those. Yeah, seriously, yeah. You'll see that they have just manuals just up, you know, almost to the ceiling for the voice scripts in that game, which is just awesome. I mean, that gets me excited. Um, yeah, and again, you know, even further out on the horizon, we've got games like Fantasy Star and... Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to say that I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm good with Vita. I don't need more announced. Obviously, there you could always hope for more. But well, to be completely honest with you, if we switch over, and, and I'm not trying to bash here. I'm just saying if we look at what's coming out for the 3DS that we know about from now until Christmas and we look at what we know is coming out for the Vita from now until Christmas, 
for me personally as a Japanese gamer, there isn't a big discrepancy currently in in the number of titles I'll buy for each of them currently. So right. we'll we'll have to see, you know. I think that Sony have got a problem with um their own marketing as well because they're <laughs> they're selling the the PSP as well at at the same time two handhelds Two portable handheld systems, and the PSP is one thousand five hundred yen now, right? It's sorry, sorry, so one thousand. Sorry, t- <laughs> I wish it was one thousand five hundred. Yeah. It's uh fifteen thousand yen now, right? They retail actually, I think, at sixteen thousand eight hundred or so. Okay, so it's already like uh, ten thousand yen cheaper than the uh, the Wi-Fi Vita. Yeah, yeah. So they're they're already ha- they're battling themselves. They're having a well, battle the with PSP themselves. The PSP is outselling the Vita. Yeah, I know that, and that's that's even worse. Yeah, that, and here's, here's the other thing that's just kind of somewhat mind-boggling is that not only, yes, are they still selling the PSP, they just announced a new color. A new color as well. Which Cobalt. looks wonderful. Uh, I think it looks great, actually. The two-tone blue looks wonderful, but a new PSP? Really? And it's retailing for 17,800 yen. And yeah, Wi-Fi Vitas can be had for just over 20,000 yen. This is the prices are way too close. Maybe if the if the PSP was ten thousand yen and the Vita was twenty thousand yen, you'd kind of have that gap where the they were obviously selling to very different people. But if a Vita can be had for just like a couple thousand yen more, and people don't really know much about it, and they go out and buy the PSP, yeah, Sony, you're shooting yourselves in the foot. Well, it's it's a library of games that the PSP's got as well. I mean, you can go to the 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 store, and the amount of PSP titles on the on the shelf is a it's quite astounding, and then you, yeah, especially you, here in Japan, yeah, the, there are used games galore, and and many many good games. You know, many good games ended up coming out for this system, especially in Japan. Mm. This system is, I think, really underappreciated in the West. But I remember the first time I came to Japan and and was really looking at PSP games and saw there are a lot of games that came out here that didn't even come out in the West, and I was like that came out on PSP, that came out on PSP. I mean, they had this Suicoden collection, Suicoden 1 and 2. They had Mega Man Legends 1 mm-hmm. and 2. Yep. Uh, yeah, these are these are awesome games. And, of course, I'm talking about ports here, but, but yeah. Yeah, it's it's quite disturbing that what what's uh, how Sony have got themselves into this, this mess. This situation, yeah. This, this huge situation. Although, to give Sony some credit, they've got four systems on the market. <laughs> and and to, balance, to balance four systems... On the market is is quite a task. They got the PS2, which is still selling. Uh, the PS2 is still outselling the the, uh, the Nintendo DS and the 360, which is quite crazy. Uh, a system which is over 12 years old, which is just crazy. So yeah, you got a PS2, you got the PS Vita, PSP, and and PS3. Four systems on the market. I mean, is it not time to not put as much money into the PSP or what? Or do, do they do they continue putting money into the PSP because that's where their market is? Well, here's what I wonder a little bit is they're still selling the PSP at 17, you know, 16, 17,000 yen. People are obviously still buying it. It's not selling like crazy, but it's selling, you know, 15,000 or 20,000 units a week or whatever Mm -hmm. and a little more on release day. Um, I'm pretty sure their profit margin on that is pretty decent these days. I mean, the system's been around for quite a while. Yeah. So on the one hand, you're looking at okay, we're still making quite a bit off of this system that people are still people are still buying. It's still in demand. But yeah, it's it's more like they're looking at the present than the future. But if you're a company that's strapped for cash, what what can you do? And I'm not justifying what they're doing. I'm not trying to say that, but I'm just saying that that could be one reason that they're still pushing the PSP is because their profit margin on this is probably pretty decent by now. Yeah, it's got to be pretty huge, right? Yeah, for sure. Especially that people are still buying a PSP, a 2005 piece of hardware, for more than a 3DS right it's crazy but mm. but some people are still buying it so well the 3DS is clocking in at about 70,000 units a week right yeah yeah and the vita was like 10 vita's around 10 yeah. which which but for for the system which has been out for 4 months mm-hmm. yeah that's uh, extremely disturbing it's low there's nothing in the next 3 months that'll push it any higher and even persona 4 in june that's even one of those games where you might see a blip for a week or two, but it's not like it's not a system longevity. seller. Yeah, it's not. It's a port, first of all. Yeah, it's a very enhanced port, but a port's a port. Right. So, are you worried now that uh, that they did this uh, the Vita Heaven and they haven't really shown anything to make the Japanese gamer get on board? Well, sales wise, absolutely. You know, 
for me as a Vita gamer and as a handheld gamer, I'm I'm quite happy with the system. I like what it does, but absolutely, you want to see more software on there. You want to see more games that you like on there. Right. Well, because Sony announced that it sold uh, 1.2 million uh-huh. uh, worldwide, right? Right. And it looks like it's it's because uh, the numbers came out for the U.S. and and the U.S. Uh, NPDs that it was only about 225,000 units in the U.S. Uh huh. And it was like a mil- half a million in Japan, right? Or Asia? Right, right. So is that, does that mean that Europe has sold half a million as well? Probably not quite, but, but yes, probably getting getting up there. So that's that still says that Europe's Sony land, right? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. You know, I read some conflicting reports on that, but, but the latest news that I read was that, yeah, it seemed to have done pretty well. Pretty well in Europe, so. Well, that's what FIFA does for you. That's a system yeah, seller for seriously. for uh, for and Europe. Uncharted seemed to do well over there too, wasn't it? Wasn't yeah. it number one. Yeah, Uncharted was one. FIFA was number two, I think. Yep. But um, I'm not worried about it in terms of Western developers, because uh, even if it's if they don't have as many third parties on board as I would like, or they don't seem to be coming up with the. The, the the titles or, or announcing the titles at the moment maybe they're saving them for E three I don't know but with Sony uh, in the West uh, like uh, Santa Monica Studios in the in the states and and you've got Sony Europe I know it'll be backed pretty heavily and Sony always produce quality games I'm not really worried for the Western side of um, of Vita I'm kind of worried more as the the Japanese side of it well especially it, considering Japan is now the home of handhelds right. Well, is, that's where they've been for the past, I don't know, for the past like six, seven years. It's all been sure. handheld. It's handheld land now. Handheld and and land. for this thing not to sell well in handheld land, yeah. It, yeah, yeah. they're going to have to do something for sure. It's disturbing. Well, I just want to get back to the back to the, the gaming heaven for Vita. And um, one of the most disappointing parts of it for me was seeing uh, Phil Inafune. <laughs> <laughs> um sitting pretty in a in a library right with, with no game around him after making so much fuss even especially at GDC when he made a speech about you know we how Japan how Japan modern Japanese games are nothing but from a blast to the past right and then even hinting at the GDC that he's developing a game for I think uh I think he hinted at developing a game for Vita. Yeah, quote and then, unquote amazing. Amazing, right. And then getting in onto this this part of gaming heaven and then even talking about himself in the third person. He's like, <laughs> My Inafune is going to and you're like, What? It's, and uh he didn't even mention anything specific. And he's been raising all this fuss about Jap- the state of modern Japanese games, and still it's all hot air because he hasn't shown his goods. He's got to show his right. cards, man. Right, right. And for him to be in a library, <laughs> you know, I was just like, what is he doing? Yeah, that's wacky. Yeah. Some I of just, this. I was just, my floor, my jaw fell on the floor. Yeah. And it was like a minute and nine seconds. Yeah, I'm yeah. I'm looking at it right here. Like, <laughs> what? What was that? And like, the first 20 seconds was just like. It, it's no, that's. Cool. That's stuff the they kind tacked of stuff, on all the videos. Yeah, that's the kind of stuff that caused the outrage uh, for that's this. That's like, the, where is the roadmap? That's, yes. There's no roadmap. The roadmap yes. goes nowhere. That's kind of, yeah, as a gamer, maybe you, for you, you're happy. But for business-wise... And no, business-wise, it's horrible. I, I, for, get, don't get me wrong. Yeah. They, they did not do the right thing here. Yeah. Like, no, you, you know. I think you painted that one really clear. And yeah. Then if... Martin, I'm taking none of these games. Touched your uh, the, your Netherlands nether zone in, in, at all? <laughs> uh, no, nothing. Nothing that's made me go ooh. That made me interested. No, I've not never been a Persona or um, Fantasy Star online. I've right. never been any of those players. So, no. To be honest, everything that uh, was shown on the um, the Heaven video reels, no, mm. not not really. If anything, did it make you want to just say what's coming out in the West next? Yeah, it made me think. Hey, what have the West got to offer? That's the first time I, I said, well, I gotta get myself a, an account, get myself a Best yeah. Buy card, and start buying games from the West. Yeah, yeah. That's what made me feel like, anyway, especially for the time being. I mean, Inafune, he's got some. Th- I mean, some of the things he said about the Japanese uh, industry, saying that they rely heavily on true. their IP. I right. think most of it's true. 
Right. But he's not a pundit. He's a developer. So yeah. he yeah. has to back yeah, exactly that up. Exactly right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's got to back it up, but it's like an artist. They don't want they don't want to show the unfinished painting, right? So if he's got nothing really to show, you know, you don't well, want I mean, to show just, it. I'm, I guess the way he stepped forward and then not sh- sh- by not and then didn't show anything was just like what? Well, I think it was a slap in the face to me. Anyway. Yeah, I mean, I think in in a, in a way, it's his name. And people right. expect something, right? It's Inafune with, being with Inafune name. or Phil being Inafune. Right. <laughs> so, I mean, p- people think, oh, the name, and they they expect something. But I think he looks at his own name and, and his own stature as like, yeah, yeah he's confident with what he's got. And he's confident with what people think of him right. or, how, or how people perceive him, that he can he, he feels like he's able to do this. And obviously he did because that's the way he, he put it across to people. Right. So he's confident. He's, he's confident with, with what he's got and what he's building. I hope he's not the main character in his next game. <laughs> well, I don't know. Have you guys seen his his yeah, 3ds game that's exactly. coming out? Exactly. It looks like one of those. You guys know what metal games are here in Japan. It looks like one of those metal game setups. And if, for those of you who don't know what metal games are, it's almost like gambling for miners. You buy these coins and you use the coins to actually stick into these games. Uh, to win more coins, and the purpose of the whole thing is to get more coins. You can't actually do anything with them. You can't exchange them for prizes or for real money like you can with Pachinko. Um, but but the whole thing is just to play this game to get more medals. Is, and, is yeah. this mobile mobile? No, no. Well, they might have these metal games on Mo, mobile, but I'm talking about like actual. You go to the arcades. And they usually have a floor dedicated to metal games. Right, okay, okay. Yeah, where it's it's like a bit – they're very elaborate setups. And you, you stick your, your medals in and you roll them in to try and push more medals off the ledge. And by doing that, you trigger all of this other crazy yeah, it's like, stuff. It's like one of those big like truck – what was it? Construction trucks that's right. shoving stuff at you. Yes, yes. And the whole thing, the whole point I'm getting at is they always have these really cheap looking characters and these really goofy looking characters. And they, you know, they have B level or C level or D level people working on these character designs and these animations. And, uh, yeah, you know, Funi's, you know, you know, Funi's game that, that we know about so far, the kind of pirate animal game kind of really reminded me of that. And so now that he's coming out and saying all this about the Vita too, it's just like, come on, you're gonna have Isn't to back. Isn't that game go more to, to like just get money? He just wants quick money. Yeah, well, to fund I don't, his I, own game. Yeah, I have no well, idea. Isn't he doing? He is doing mobile games, though, right? Who isn't doing mobile games? These well, I mean, days? I think that's where you get your money, though, right? To that's to, what he's trying to do to develop yeah. your big games is to go to go mobile. But he's not. I mean, to being high and mighty, and then you know, play get the dirty Mobage games out of the way to get some money doesn't yeah. seem like exactly what he's saying and what he's doing. Are right, matching. right, are matching up. Yeah, yeah. Well, I want to say just one more thing about the uh, the videos here okay. for this uh, game heaven. Um, I think most people out there, most English speakers out there, were probably super disappointed with this, and that's fine because there was a lot disappointing about this. Uh, however, I want to say that, that I, I, what I did like was a lot of the videos, uh, looking through them, uh, not the Inafune video or you know the, the Super Robot Wars one where nothing happened. Um, but, but the developer videos, especially for Persona 4, Zero no Kiseki, uh, these videos were, were pretty cool and, and actually packed with information. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was kind of nice to get a developer's point of view on the Vita. Uh, they weren't too sweet on it to the point where you were just like, okay, this is lame and fake. Yeah, very saccharine. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but they did say some cool things, and each developer, uh, at the very end of them, if you watched the video but didn't really know what was going on at the end, they said, please tell us what, what the Vita is to you or what the Vita can do you know, for you. And they each wrote it on a piece of paper, and each one was different. Uh, so you know, one person, the guy from Sega, he wrote basically like connectivity so obviously, Fantasy Star Online is a game now that you're going to always be connected on your Vita when you're out of the house and you come home and you play it on the PC. Right. Or some of the Falcom guys wrote kind of like, you know, uh, it, it could be like a rebirth or kind of a new miracle for, for Japanese handheld gaming. And, you know, that might sound a little silly. It was it was a play on, on the word Kiseki, but, but it, mm. it, it's just kind of interesting to see what they had to talk about, how this is kind of the first system where they could really do full voice thanks to the size of the cartridges and the, and the audio, audio quality and all of that. Uh, so it was fun to hear that stuff. And I don't want to sound like too much of a homer here. I know that I'm, I'm pretty big on the Vita, but I, I don't want to really come across as a homer 
by saying that, oh, I wasn't super disappointed in this. Uh, yes, <laughs> Sony is friggin' screwed. Sony is really friggin' screwed. This thing is selling like crap, and they had to do something, and they had this chance, and they didn't do it. Um, but I did enjoy some of those videos, and I, I, I yeah, like the fact Fantasy Online that actually looked really good, I got to say. Right. I mean, obviously, the frame rate wasn't quite there yet, and, and it was very, you know, it's like a 10% or less developed game so far, but... But hell yeah! I mean, really? The, yeah. They they put out us like what a, that was all CG back in late December, December right? Last year, right, didn't they put out with trailer. one where they're running through the forests? Yes, yes, yes. That's that looked really freaking good. Yeah, I mean, the game on PC is absolutely shaping up to to look really nice. Yeah. So for me, I'm very excited about this. I'm keeping that excitement a little suppressed because it's 2013. 18. A but, lot of those better games but out. knowing that that's on the horizon is cool. It's very nice. But yeah, I just want to say I enjoyed the, the developer videos, uh, particularly because I can understand what's being said and, and I can kind of appreciate it. Whereas I know that if you didn't know what was being said and you just realized that there weren't any good announcements and nothing really happened, you'd be like, okay, this is bull. You know, this is crap. So, so right. you, do you think that Fantasy Star Online is a system seller? No. Uh, not for not for an online only game. Uh, it, it has its fan base, and it it could again create a blip on the radar. But no, it's not a system seller. Yeah, I didn't think it was a system seller either. No, I think uh, I looked at some past sales numbers for the past iterations, and you're you're talking less than five hundred thousand. And uh, most of those games had an actual offline mode in them as well, whereas this one is pretty much confirmed to only have an online mode. Online mode, right? Yeah, which which is fine for me because it, it's kind of a way to prevent hacking and, and that sort of thing as well. But yeah, uh, the whole world is is not sold on online only games where you might have a monthly fee or you know it might have some sort of a you know a, a caveat there. Okay, nice. Right, Kyle, UMD program, go. Yeah, so there are two two announcements that came along with the PlayStation Heaven videos. Number one uh, is a nice one. Sony is giving anyone who owns, uh, who bought a PlayStation Vita uh, 1,000 yen for free to use on the PlayStation Network. And this is also applicable to anyone who buys a Vita between now and the end of the period. So the period for this promotion is March 9th, which was yesterday, or I guess two days ago now, to April 8th. So that's the deadline for application on this. And all you have to do to get the 1,000 yen, anyone can do it, anyone who uses a Japanese PlayStation account. You have to do it on your Vita. So you go on your Vita, you log into the PlayStation Network, and you go to Campaigns. And it'll be the top campaign in there. It's called the. It's basically the Spring Thank You campaign. I think it's just the Haru Kansha campaign. And, uh, yeah, there's a little thing in there that you download. And so you just download that, and it's free to download. And by doing that, Sony will then send you to your email address that's associated with your account. They'll send you, uh, I think it's the link for a basically a questionnaire. And they just want you to a- answer some questions for them. And so if you do that, you fill it in and you send it back, and you'll get another email back with a code. And you just put that code in on the PlayStation Network, and you get 1,000 yen for free. So that's pretty nice. I mean, it, it's... It's, again, not anything that's going to sell systems, but it's a nice little thing to, yeah, to just have. So anyone out there, again, who owns a Vita can do this. That's like 3,000 yen in, in total now. at night. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Just go do it now. It's up there. Just go Martin. do it. Yes. Don't worry. I won't Martin. do that. No, th- this is um, this is two. What is it? How much now? 3,000 yen in total? Yeah, they're, they're kind of offering as, as, yeah, money back for buying a Vita. Yeah, because if you buy a Vita in Japan now, uh, the 3G, 3G model, with a game, you get 2,000 yen back, right? Yep. So if you do that, and then you do this, uh, thank you. So you, you get another 1,000 yen, so you have 3,000 yen in total. Uh, UMD? That's right, yeah. They also updated the UMD passport system. Again, this is Japan only. They have announced that this won't be uh, coming out into the States or the West or anywhere else at all. Um, but basically, this UMD Passport, it originally started when the Vita was launched, and it allows you to take your UMD game, put it in your PSP, and kind of register it. And by doing that, you can then download it onto your Vita at a much cheaper price. The problem was a lot of the big names were missing. Uh, however, as part of yesterday's, or yeah, uh, two days ago's uh, Vita Game Heaven, 
Uh, they did announce that most of the holdouts, most of the rest of the big holdouts are now on there. So they added companies like Square, Capcom, Falcom, Electronic Arts, Gung Ho, Konami, and Level 5. So definitely some big names on there. Uh, this includes games like Monster Hunters, uh, Final Fantasy Type-0, along with a lot of Square's other stuff on there. Everything else from Capcom. Most of Falcom's games are up there. EA's games. A bunch from Gung Ho, Konami, yeah, and some from Level 5. So uh, I know a lot of people obviously aren't too excited about this, but I did some calculating on this today. And just as a quick example, uh, for example, Final Fantasy Type-0 a game that I haven't picked up yet, but I want to. Uh, this is a game that sells for, I think, around 6,200 yen on the PSN. So it's quite expensive. If I wanted to pick this up on the PSN, it would cost me 6,200 yen to play it on my Vita. However, used copies of the UMD for this can be had for around 3,000 or 3,500 yen, depending on where you look. Uh, and then the download fee on top of that for UMD Passport is only 1,000 yen. So if you look at that, you might be able to get the game for as cheap as 4,000 yen, and not only will you have it on your Vita, but you'll also have a physical copy, which then you can take and resell or do with what you want. <laughs> uh, the thing to know about this, though, is that, uh, yeah, they did find out that each UMD has its own specific code. Yeah. So one you UMD can only be used right? for this one time. So what that means is for me, uh, tomorrow, I'm going to go out and probably pick up a copy of Final Fantasy Type-0 because I'm sure that none of the copies that I'll find tomorrow used will have, have been done yet. Uh, however, some of these copies uh, in c upcoming weeks or months will probably have been registered. And there's no way to know if the game has been registered besides trying it yourself. So you really have to be careful. Uh, so if you're kind of into this and you're in Japan, uh, I recommend going out soon and, and checking out which, which of these games are newly added on the list and checking them out. Because honestly, between the Falcom games and Type-0, I'll probably be saving, you know, 8,000 to 10,000 yen on this just because they added these games that I don't need to... Uh, to buy the full download version. I can just use the disc. Uh, because a lot of times, like we talked about before, these PSP games are much cheaper for the actual UMD than they are on the PlayStation Network. So this kind of allows you to, uh, to get them a little bit cheaper. And you still have the physical copy, which, again, you can resell or do whatever, yeah, whatever you want with this. So it's kind of nice that they finally added some of these, especially Square and Capcom were the big, big names, the big holdouts. So. Cool. That's, yeah, no, it's, it's good that the... the carry on supporting this but i really wish sony would just do one price instead sure. of instead sure. of having every like game or every developer like deciding their own price on on these uh umd passports it's kind of stupid i think that i well, mean some it, of them it, are completely useless like monster hunter i'm not i guess useless is a bit of a stretch but but like monster hunter the download is 1500 yen and the game itself used you know I mean, it's it's still going to cost you a little bit, like maybe fifteen hundred yen, and so if you combine those together, you're already looking at over the price of the download version. So I guess if you already own the game physically and don't have it yet on your Vita, uh, you're still getting it for fifteen hundred yen. But that just that seems like a lot for a game that you already own. Yeah, I mean, it's not only that. I'm just talking about the, the actual price and structure itself. I mean. Even what what we talked about last week with the, the Japanese game prices being all over the place, and there's there's no one set price. You know, everything's a different price. Sure, sure. It's it's, it's exactly like this model as well with the, with the UMD passports. Everything's a different price, and it's just really confusing. Yeah, and yeah. I, I think Sony should have said um, set a precedent and and said, okay, this is the price. And, yeah, and, I, yeah, I don't disagree at all. I, I wonder if they would have done that if anyone would have even been interested in this. I guess that's the, the you know, the third parties. Yeah, I, I, maybe, obviously, maybe they just said... Maybe. The only, yeah, the only way they got them on board was saying, hey, you can charge whatever you want. We don't know if people will pay it, but, but hey, you know, there well, it is. Well, they, they must be because otherwise they wouldn't, these other companies wouldn't have rolled in. Yeah, yeah. So I guess it's it's working to an extent. I'd like I mean, it's some decent news. Uh, you know, the 3,000 yen, uh, we'll take it. I mean, why not? And then, yeah, I mean, just these, these additions to the UMD Passport, it's just nice to know. You know, people were saying, oh, Capcom's not on there because they completely cut ties with Sony or whatever, you know. But here they are, you know, and, and Sony used Monster Hunter in the promotional videos for this. So right, we'll right. see if, if that means anything for the future. But, yeah. Okay. 
Uh, right, okay, well, let's stay with the Japanese game development and uh, a guy who says your games suck. <laughs> this created quite the stir. It did, didn't it? So there's this guy uh, called Phil Fish, the guy behind Fez, basically responded to a Japanese guy. At GDC, at, right? At GDC, a yes. uh, Japanese guy uh, who asked Phil Fish, or the board, the panel, uh, he said that, I see that you uh, admire Japanese games. So what do you think of Japanese games? And Phil or Fish, modern Japanese games. Modern yeah, what Japanese do you think of the current state? Yeah. Right. And Phil Fish stands up and says, quite rudely, your games suck. Your, I love how he said your. That was yeah. really, like, right yeah, in the was, heart. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you think? Well, look. Let me set this up a little bit because it doesn't stop there. Okay. Uh, he says your games suck uh, and proceeds to kind of go on a rant while many people in the audience are clapping and cheering about what Phil Fish is saying, uh, a guy who has never released a game in his life. Um, yeah, so that, that's kind of tough. But, you know, and, and he kind of laid into this Japanese guy who doesn't speak English that well and was just there. He He was, you know... Gets the first time up there. To ask. Yeah, first time in the no States. Reason. Doesn't know anything. He had been studying English really hardcore right before this trip, and he came here on his own money. Anyway, gets there and, and has the courage finally to get up and ask the panel and basically just gets reamed, which is kind of sad. But if Phil Fish came and apologized to him later or did something, that might be okay. But no, Phil Fish for a few days afterwards gets on his Twitter and uh, – is kind of giving off many e- expletives to people who are trying to tell him he, he did the wrong thing. He reiterates He still that, hey, stands on his opinion, yeah. Yeah, Japanese games do suck, so come on. Right. And he's entitled to his opinion. I don't want to say that he's not. Many people out there might think Japanese games suck, but the fact that he took it so far, and then finally you can tell that he 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 realized that this was creating a problem because he he actually did end up apologizing to the guy through Twitter. Uh, just yesterday or so. So this was a few days after uh, right. he had belittled the guy and belittled anyone on Twitter who said that, you know, uh, hey, I mean, you kind of suck your, your foot in your mouth there. This guy, um, Phil Fish, he was uh, his game was announced on uh, 2007. And obviously, you know, it's now 2012. So this guy oh, took take five years to make a game, right? Are we sure this guy is not a Japanese developer? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Maybe he works for um, Square Enix. Square Enix, or maybe um, Polyphony. Maybe oh, he yeah, works Polyphony for Polyphony. Digital. Yeah. yeah, maybe. I don't know, but he's he's had this game for five years. I remember watching videos on the One Up Show, maybe four <laughs> years ago, five years ago. <laughs> I'm, I'm, where's the One Up Show now? <laughs> yeah, I mean, come yeah, they on. They need a One Up. Yeah. What? Why? Like the Duke Nukem of. Yes. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah, I mean, this guy's an indie developer, and he and he hasn't been able to put out a game in five years. I mean, and also, his game, to me, looks like Mario and Echo Chrome, and they're, they're two Japanese games, if I'm not wrong. Yeah. So, I don't know how, how he can come around and say, your games suck, when the, the games that influences his game are both Japanese. Now let's get this straight. There are the state of Japanese gaming is not as solid as it as, as it, it once, once was, was, especially this generation. But yes. come on, there are some quality Japanese games still out well, there. Well, I think I just think the the big thing about this was the timing. Like yeah, we absolutely. are on the eve of no, it's three eleven right now. So a whole year now has passed since the big earthquake. Yep. And you know, nine eleven is a big address, but we three eleven here, and it, I I think it's a good time to look forward and go, okay, well, what would we we can't talk about three eleven as like it affects us anymore. A whole year right, has passed. Right. We have to move forward. And so I thought the timing. I don't really care like where it came from, but uh, that it's being discussed is a uh, is a good thing, and you can take a look at. I think people who are carrying on and doing what they're doing and not changing and trying to make a, develop games for that have global appeal, and then you have who are still doing well, and then you have the the group of people like Platinum Games, maybe Devil's Third eventually eat the ducky when he's finished drinking and putting on yeah. his, his manny manny hose or whatever he does, <laughs> or touching ladies' yeah. breasts. Or, yeah, <laughs> and boobs, and manny hose. And uh, or you have uh, you know binary domain by Ryugoku Studios. You know a lot of 
developers who are trying to make games that have mass appeal, global appeal. And there's like, I think there's like a good discussion to have amongst themselves about the state of games and Sure. I don't know. Sure. I don't. I don't think it's just a spurred. Maybe. Maybe that type of discussion, but mm. maybe it. Maybe it will. Well, I think um, the ja- two niche on is like you know they've responded to it a little bit, but yeah, yeah. I mean, I think Japan, in terms of development, they've always had a difficult time in grasping the HD, uh, HD transition from like PS2 to three uh, PS3 or 360. Oh, it was hard, yeah. It was. They found it. They found that that transition extremely difficult. And I think that was be- mainly because they were already focused on handhelds and trying to take a handheld game, which is obviously a lot lower resolution. You don't need to throw as many polys around. Right. It's taken going from like a handheld to a fully fledged Absolutely. HD title is a huge learning curve. Oh, and yeah. and as as you know, the Japanese basically they've kept afloat handhelds by themselves. If you think about it, the amount of handheld games that have come out of Japan. The the West wouldn't even really have to develop for the, these handheld platforms because Japan by itself has produced enough quality titles to keep both the 3DS, the DS, and the PSP alive without any support from the West. Well, that's the way I, I think, look at it anyway. Yeah, I think yeah. it's uh, kind of related to also to, um, like, for example, the new, uh, the new iPad coming out. You know, there are, there are a lot of developers who are seeing the increase in resolution and all of that and going, uh-oh. Now we're going to have to create much more complex, much better games for this, and that's yeah. we can't get we can't get by with you know just like typical like type indie games that aren't necessarily so complex, but have a good like single core gaming mechanic that is enough to keep the game afloat and sell well. I think that's sort of kind of what's happening with handheld right now, but it's the le- the whole leveling up aspect. That's in if you develop too hard on something that's inferior. Mm. What happens when you eventually have to make that you pro, you know promote yourselves technically? It's also I think it's bud- budgets as well. Japanese game budgets don't seem to be anywhere near as big as Western developed right. games. Yeah, and uh, exactly. obviously, they're digging right. themselves into a bigger grave by going gray and mon- mobagi. As far as I'm concerned, they're like burrowing and bigger and more into the problem. Yeah, I, as you you guys have known, living in Japan for for how long we have, we've always seen this phenomenon of handheld gaming. And it's only getting bigger and bigger every day, whether it's on a 3DS, whether it's on a DS, a PSP, or even an iPhone now, because apparently iPhone is the biggest selling consumer product in Japan at the moment. Yep. So the handheld is only going to get bigger in Japan, whether it's on a, a, a smartphone or a home console. So I think the two differences between the West and, 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 and Japan is Japan seems to have taken this road on the handheld, whereas the West is like, oh, we want everything in the, in the living room, you know? So it's it's two very different outlooks. So Phil Fish is obviously just looking at home console, home computer games, and obviously not looking at the other side of it. I think we need to see uh, more games that are coming out that look like they're pushing the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 to their limits. Sure. Well, that's and not going to come out of Japan. And it's not, but and we're reaching the end of the cycle, and we may never see that. Well, there's one game that may have done it, and that was Last Guardian, but that's uh, been now Last Guardian. Santa Monica's, right? Santa Monica's on board, and so is Europe to try and help with the development cycle. So you expect in Japan to be able to push mm-hmm. that, which is kind of weird because they developed this hardware, right? And they're not they're not able to get the best yeah, out of it. I mean, okay, so uh, let's we got some tweets. You want to answer some of these tweets? Sure. Let's okay. get to it. Tweets. Do uh, it. What's that? Do it. Do <laughs> it. Are you waiting um, for okay. One of the tweets from Lyoko07. Uh, is uh, Ragnarok Odyssey worth a $70 plus dollar import price? Not really. Uh, if you're really starved for a Vita game, like I, you know, we talked about this a little bit last week, but if you're really starved for a Vita game, that's kind of a cheaper Monster Hunter clone, uh, and you're, and you don't think seventy dollars is is too much on that? Uh, maybe I'm I'm the kind of person that if I lived in the states would probably drop seventy dollars on this. But for your average game player who's dropping forty dollars on a typical Vita game, seventy dollars for this game that that is maybe an eight out of ten, uh, it's probably not worth it. Okay, 
Cool. Uh, Cheesemeister, 3K. <laughs> Since games of luxury is mostly sold in first world markets, what can be done to sell in more territories given their economies? And like you said before, Mega Drive games. Yeah, produce Genesis more games. Sega Genesis games, man. <laughs> 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 that yep. thing sold like I, I don't know if it still does but i know that in, in especially like south american countries the thing was still selling through the early 2000s like crazy uh so what we talked about a little bit was the, the ps2 can kind of take that over now you know it's become the machine now that it will never die and so it, it can go on in these non-first world countries yeah i mean india is another one look, i mean look how many people live in india yep and and the uh sony can pump these ps2s out for for God knows how much now, really cheap. Yeah, and uh, f- with with the amount of titles, uh, yeah, that's, on, a, on that's the platform. a great library to walk into. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, most of these people probably won't even have HD TV either. So uh, that that doesn't matter. So, so yeah, and yeah, do you want to do the other one? Pebbles, Bam Bam Seven. What's your take on Tales Tales of Grace F for PS3? Uh, right. uh, I played the Japanese demo of it. It was enough to get me to order the English version of the game. Um, I would definitely check it out. I hear, and from what I played in the demo, I would agree, it has the best battle system in Tales, period. Seems to be tons of content in here. Obviously, the F, it's an upgrade from the original Wii version. Mm-hmm. Lots to do here. Uh, I appreciate that they're bringing this out in English. Story seems to be eh, hit or miss, but but for the battle system, the game is beautiful. It's in HD tales. It looks great. So I would say check it out. Okay, uh, Crackalackle 7, last one. Uh, Crackalackle Z, I beg your pardon. Uh, Katsudon or curry and rice, what would you pick? All right, Steve. Cats. All right. Dirty cats. Dirty cats. Cocoa That's poor cutlet, by the way. Uh, Cocoa eating curry and rice with cheese topping. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I'm gonna go with curry and rice. Uh, my my recent curry of ri- my recent favorite curry rice has been uh, we have a place here called uh, Fukushima Joto Kare. It's very nice. Fukushima I, Joto. <laughs> yeah, it's like Joto high, is quali- high, quality. Yeah, high quality. High like quality. Fukushima's yeah. high quality curry and uh, is that- it's a branch here in Osaka. It's it's amazing. Cool. Right. Okay. So. That's the end of that, the, the tweets. Good Lord. All right. No more. So housekeeping, right? Yeah. Okay. So uh, let's, uh, let's clean up. Okay. If you want to reach us, oh, it's... Oh, man. Uh, you made me hungry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Three in the morning with that cots. Oh, man. I'm not going to go eat now. It's the worst thing to do. You mad? <laughs> I don't know that it's the worst thing to do. I could think of a few things worse. What, what, would you want, are you going to go to sleep on a full stomach? I just wouldn't sleep. Exactly. I got gaming to do, Martin. I got gaming to do. I'm <laughs> going straight to bed. Yeah. I really am. Yeah, me too. Me too. I'm a bit <laughs> wired. I can do some Azura's Wrath right now. There you go. Go do it. You should live stream it. Did you get your capture card ready? It's there. It's laid out right there. Is it That's... in? I, 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 there's something wrong about taking a beautiful rig and opening it up and doing stuff through it already. Yeah, yeah. No, it's not. Slapping it's a so card pristine. in. so pristine. Nah, get it in. Slap it in. And right. Anyways, um, okay, housekeeping. So, want to get in touch with us? It's uh, redsungamer at gmail.com. That's our email address. Uh, if you want to check out our YouTube channel, it's redsungamer TV. Uh, Twitter is all one word, redsungamer. My Twitter is DJ Mizuhara. Steven is? Steve underscore redsun G. Kyle. Kyle22, all spelled out. And your YouTube? Uh, my YouTube is Skygene22. That's S K Y G H E N E. And then the numbers, 22. So, this has been episode 34 of the Red Sun Gamer podcast. We will probably see you next week with episode 35, hopefully. Ho, ho, ho. Ho, ho, ho. ho, ho, ho. Check back for it. Yep. All right. Let's go to some of this. Let's, Let's go to some, some of this. Of this.